The media has recently spoken out about X and social media saying that misinformation and lies are being spread all over the internet, with the CEO of the media releasing a statement saying that they are, quote, not happy to see people going over to X to get their lies when we have perfectly good lies over here. I know the lies on the internet are the new shiny thing and may look appealing, but there is no reason for people to look elsewhere when our lies are safe, consistent, grade A, socially acceptable, vetted lies. And you don't have to worry about what's in them. Veteran WAPO journalist Brad Levin said, these new lies the kids are watching now aren't even agreed upon by the community to make sure they are pure. Listen, I understood if you just weren't looking for lies at all, but to just start looking elsewhere when our lies are clearly the industry standard makes no sense. Some of these new guys have been lying for two, three years tops when we have decades of lying under our belt. Hey, if you want to take a chance with some off-brand knockoff lies, just know you are doing so at your own peril. But don't actually though, please. I'm telling you we're a solid provider and you don't need to go shopping around. When asked to comment on the trust in media being at record lows, the head of media said data has shown our trust is higher than ever. See how I did that with a straight face? That's the kind of stuff you get over here with us. Believable. In fact, some of our news has been referred to as can't believe it's not true. Professional, homegrown, American lies from a guy in a suit, not some bozo with a smartphone who heaven forbid might even be Russian. I get that people might want to mess around with some off-brand stuff here and there when Coke and Pepsi aren't on the menu. But when it comes to lies, they are on the menu and it's time for you to take a sip. Twitter user PureBloodPatriot5 has accused the media of foul play as three men in suits showed up to his basement and demanded 20% of all revenue earned through published materials that turned out years later to be false, saying they told him, quote, if you want to tell lies on our turf, that's fine, but you got to pay the VIG. No free lunches out here, capiche? And it would be a shame if he had to get put on a hate list that had him demonetized. They then proceeded to spit on his computer and strongly encouraged him to play ball while tapping a photo of Jonathan Greenblatt. Quickly before we start this holiday season, get Factor to get nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. No wonder it's America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. Get 50% off Factor with the code BOYSCAST50 at factormeals.com slash BOYSCAST50. The Boys. It's the Boys Cast. The Lads. It's the Boys Cast. The Dudes. We Fellas, I'm in Los Angeles tonight. Then we got two shows, two nights in Irvine, San Jose this weekend. Come out. Denver has finally been added. The most requested date of mine. So we got that. The Amsterdam second show's on tour, as well as the other whole European tour, which is Dund Dublin, London. Boston at the Wilbur is on sale, then Phoenix, Toronto, and a bunch more that'll be on the screen. Do not miss out. But more importantly, we have an announcement to make. Unfortunately, well, it's isn't that big of a deal. Mm. But next week, due to some scheduling, the episode is going to be coming out Saturday. And we said there's two options. One is we record an episode nine days in advance. Yeah. T option two yeah. was one day late, and we decided. Oh, you forgot on about Monday. option three. You get nothing. <laughs> Option three. Option three is you get nothing. So option three was not even on the table for us because that's no. not the kind of podcast we are. No. And Danny, I should say, congratulations. For what? Martin Screlly is in Crowbar Motel. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Crowbar uh, <laughs> I was just always thinking about Martin Screlly when we're talking about uh, SBF. Oh. Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> like, what? I was like, Screlly was just on. He was Tucker talking Carlson. about it. Yeah. Sam Bankman Freed yeah. is in Crowbar Motel. Yeah. And Daniel. He's. I actually watched him walking in today. You know He's, what? He feels really, a little lighter. Really does. <laughs> it really does nothing for me. Really, the water doesn't taste better. No, just like your bucket and, of your bucket of lard. I just got kicked off Instagram again. <laughs> no. Maybe if I get some money back, I filled out a form. Danny's late I'm night gonna, scoops of lard taste better. I don't think I'm getting a dime back. Dude's asses smell sweeter. I'm not one of those. And they already smell pretty <laughs> sweet to you as is. <laughs> I'm not one of the secured creditors, I don't think. So you're uh, not happy, and you're not getting your money back. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I I guess it's like a win for the United States criminal justice system. Well, we don't care the about system, that. The system works. I mean, remember when... With the boys, guys, we're more concerned with you and your mental well-being. No, no. Well, remember a few months ago, they dropped that one charge, and everybody goes, look at him, he's going to walk scot-free. Remember that? And everybody was like, because he's giving all the money to the donors. Did you he's punch like, a wall? Nah, a year ago I did. 
No, know? I'm saying when you heard that. Oh, no. No, no, no. I didn't think he was going to walk free. So you're the saying you're not works. a happy camper? System works. I don't know. It doesn't. So you're not getting your money back, and why is that? Uh, because they, they, the, they don't. The, you don't the need the current, it. They saw you. They looked the current, at your religion. The current CEO of uh, FTX, who's like the receivership guy who did Enron, charges like you know hundred grand a day to deal with this stuff. So essentially, it'll be one of those things. A lot of lawyers are going to get a lot of money. Oh, lawyers are getting paid out the fucking <laughs> ass. And then also, uh, I believe the FTX US people are above the FTX International, which is what I was because FTX. Ooh. US was like um, mm. more regulated or whatever. Woo! So I have a feeling I'm I'm getting table scraps. You're getting table scraps. Getting the table scraps. You're not even a little bit happy though to sloppy. see justice yeah. be served. Honestly, I mean, yeah, great. Like, I, are you stop thinking about him? He's just somebody that you used to know. You're like, you know uh, what? I don't need, it's kind of like a girlfriend that did I you mean, wrong. I, yeah, Ten years like, later, you're like, you happy that her life's gone bad, and you're just like, I don't even think. <laughs> Honestly, that that guy's not even in my life anymore. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's more one of those. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I should be happier, but it bring it. It didn't. You know, I didn't. Shows I, no was, I wasn't like. I wasn't like. Yes. Yes. <laughs> one, I actually already thought he, he was going down. You know too. what? The best revenge. Is <laughs> <laughs> Living a good life. Just find another guy. You know what I mean? You yeah. find another crypto guy, and you just you just make money. You're just living the best <laughs> life, and you look at your bank account, and yeah. you don't even think of him yeah. anymore. He's just some rotten, rotten away. Just some guy in your past, and you go, yeah, he's in jail, and you go, is he? Is Didn't he even notice? I didn't even remember. <laughs> I also like for the last several months in my mind, I'm like, oh, he's done. Like once Shkreli came on my show, and he's yeah. like, yeah, he's like, he's going away for a hundred years and then i just was like yeah you're probably right and then that's kind of i kind of was just like <laughs> it's what happens when you mess with the polish chuck yeah <laughs> oh man some guy posted screenshots i think yesterday of he goes one year ago today was the worst day of my life and he was an fdx guy and he had like showed his screenshots of of his accounts of trying to like remove like how ten, many 10 million he like he was like so he's like uh on november 7th was like 10 million oh way more than that it was like he was like uh tried to jump off roof shit oh for sure oh, i mean people killed themselves that's the thing people Did probably they? guaranteed people like i, I mean again you, you think that's what epstein was because of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did that line up uh, yeah i've seen that in fdx account <laughs> i don't think so no one's ever posited that no possibly though but there was this guy who was like a year ago today and so when the started news started happening he like posted his screenshots and there was like he, he goes to remove like a million dollars it's like successful then it was like some bitcoin and some ETH, and it's like successful and then the next day it's like 10 million dollars and it's just like pending <laughs> Which was also the day that I tried. Punch, that was dude. the day that I also tried to remove all my money. You know, early bird gets the worm, as they say. I think what this is. Uh, listen, if you're gonna run a crypto scam, yeah, you gotta take it easy. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't gotta shove it in people's face. You're, no. He was, he was, he was too bold. There's a lot of people. Logan Paul has a crypto scam, but yeah. he keeps a little. Yeah, he keeps it on key. the DL. Yeah, he's yeah. not out here. Well, it's definitely not anymore. If you're gonna I'm steal, sure he's got some good legal advice. That's if you're gonna steal, to, you go back to different places. You know, yeah. what I mean? you don't keep going back to the same store. You know, no. not even wearing a costume. You don't even give a shit. But anyways, I'm glad the justice system works. I suppose. I hey, listen. Although Shkreli disagrees, so I don't know. Okay, so I was in New York. I uh, live in New York. Two days ago, I was tr I'm trying to cash a check, and none of the banks will let me cash it. It's a whole thing. So I'm dealing with financial problems of my mm. own, right? Okay. It's fifty cents too, and I'm running around the city. No. So. Why can't you catch a check? It was a good question, Daniel. They won't let me do it in the app, and then none of the bank machines. And bank machines, there's no banks anymore, by the way. Yeah. Every bank of America is just a fucking machine, and yeah. the machine doesn't let you cash checks. It's just like a fucking Roomba you got to track whatever. down. Whatever. That's not the important part. The important part is I was walking around the city, flustered, you know, with yeah. my map and my check. Yeah, anyone, walking in the opposite direction of where you Can anyone cash you this for me? <laughs> can anyone cash checks? Excuse me, Mr. Homeless. <laughs> so I see a big wall of the Jewish flyers, right? Yeah. And like we're talking, they're expanding because this is, you know, people didn't like them on the polls. No. This is an entire building covered in this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got every guy the on there for The PSYOP is... Uh and right. were, were there 50 ladies outside of it trying to pull them down? No, no, no. It's more, well, this is the thing. It's all they got, mm, Yes, but the, the Jewish people are guarding that. So the, if you want to go pull them down on some random poll, yeah. but if you want to be pulling them down on this is the mother load, <laughs> my friend. They've got armed guards guarding these <laughs> they, posters. They, they put like the epoxy over them so you're like, you can't even get them? They wish a motherfucker would. <laughs> I'll just put it that way, right? So they're standing here watching these flyers and then some... Uh, so, uh, another. So The whole thing is so stupid. So a, <laughs> A Jewish lady goes up to the flyers, right? Yeah. 
There's a lot of people standing there. And some where, where is this location? Some guy goes up to the flyers and he's sort of got his phone and he's sort of looking a little suspicious. Sorry, it's like ladies were there and then a guy was there, right? Yeah. And there's probably like seven or eight people here. And then this guy goes up and he's kind of looking at the flyers and he pulls out his fine phone for a second and then the three other Jewish people pounce on him. They go, hey, what the hell are you doing, buddy? And the guy goes, no, no, I'm Jewish, I'm Jewish. I'm just looking, blah, blah, blah. It was just another Jewish guy. Don't touch our signs. <laughs> so there, basically a Jewish guy was just sort of poking around, being like, oh, there's one. And they were like, what the fuck you think you're doing? He goes, oh, sorry, no, I'm Jewish. <laughs> what, do you think this shit grows on trees? And you go, uh. He goes, look, I'm the hat. They thought for a second he might be taking them down. Yeah. The guy didn't even get to pull out his phone before these guys were on his ass, like glue. Yeah. So so basically, that's how if you this is even a massive psyop. And then I'm watching the whole thing, right? Yeah. So I'm at the side. Where is this? Where is this? This is um, like around Union Square. Okay. So I'm sort of poking around. I'm watching. I'm okay, well, you know. And then uh, basically, some lady comes over to me and she goes, "Hey," and I go, "Oh no!" And she goes, "You're that guy from the video, right?" <laughs> she goes, a funny video and I was like oh, okay I had to just leave because like, yeah. I'm sitting there I've, I need like a disguise yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to watch this and thing and then some right? Jews go funny video what are you planning another funny video get him and then I go like, running down the <laughs> bunch of, of, bo- 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 of Jews bo- bo- holding bo- bo- their bo- bo- keepers bo- bo- while they're just fucking <laughs> ripping hold, after you my, <laughs> hey Hey, hey, funny video, man. Mm. I heard you got to check the cash. <laughs> <laughs> I know a place. <laughs> <laughs> we're running the one way. Then we run back the other way. I got the flyers. Yeah. We run back the other way. They got the flyers. That's the kind of stuff that's <laughs> happening. <laughs> so stupid. Just take, get your own flyers and put them up beside the other flyers. I, that's yeah, the yeah. move. Like, it's like it's become this, like, it's a real psyop thing. And people are like, that's the only way to do it. Like, especially people know that, like, there's people filming them and they're getting them, like, fired from their jobs flyer like things become a insane. whole thing like the whole, the whole thing is insane <laughs> right but you're like the move is if you don't want to get fired wear you your burka yeah I mean, that's true but if you, that's a good point but then if you want to play the game you want to play the flyer game you got to go get your own flyers yeah. it's even more sad maybe the red ink is actually made out of the blood of palestinian children <laughs> Right, instead of just regular ink, and you go, this is actual blood of uh-huh. dead kids, and then you put them up beside them. Now you put your that's other the flyer. flyer game. Yes, and you're sort of like who has the most, you know, dead kid flyer sort of yeah. thing. Or you go, no, you do is you go, you know, there's those guys who for their business is putting up flyers, and then you go I have them know. put up flyers over the other flyers, and then they go, you're on camera, we're gonna get you fired, and you're like, I'm, I'm just a contract. No, not even I'm just a contract. You go, I'm currently working for myself. <laughs> Can't get me fired. If anything, you're, you're promoting. Yeah, my business right now <laughs> i'm so good that you're putting me on blast for putting up flyers hey look this guy's putting up flyers getting fired for his job he's like funny you should mention it my business is putting up palestinian flyers yeah, and for the right place I, I could put up the kidnapped israeli flyers <laughs> hey i'm a hired gun what can i say <laughs> see now we're talking <laughs> Now we are talking. You know, people name and shame this man. He goes, please do. I smell a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to say something about Israel Palestine. Yeah. Is I don't know if you saw the thing, and we're I'm not gonna, over it. We're not. Well, listen, we're not going to talk about this very much. It's just a quick little thing. Yeah. But if you look. I don't know if you've seen the thing yeah. where people that are older support Israel and people that are younger. longer support. And listen, yeah. this is me, me just. And people who are older are Republicans and people who are younger. The Democrats. younger people are not into Israel, right? No. They are not feeling it. And I think, and I saw, you know, for example, they're getting rid of Anne Frank kindergarten at some yeah. of these places. They're replacing her with someone more diverse. And then you got Fabio and some of these old heads coming yeah. out being like, I'm an Israel guy or whatever, right? Uh huh. They, I, I got, this is what I would say. The victim shits out, so that's not working for the Israel, right? Yeah. What have you heard of micro influencers? <laughs> this is the thing. They're out here trying to do the traditional method. They're like, maybe we get Fabio to speak. Remember yeah. Fabio? And people Remember, are like, who? Who? And then like a bunch of old housewives are like, yeah, the the guy from the covers uh, Chappelle Kanye you lost the cool influencer so the, the, the Jews are out as far as the young kids you yeah. know the kids aren't buying none of this right no, no so I'm thinking the Jews need a marketing consultant stay away from these big agencies you know mm. these big agencies are coming in being like you know we've been marking for religions forever we actually did the first Jesus thing you know yeah. and you go oh you did. You guys did Jesus <laughs> that was you that was, did. You know, that was our agency it was. blood and stone agency I mean we did Jesus I mean a lot of people don't know this 
but we actually did the, the you know the roman empire would have crashed a lot earlier <laughs> if it wasn't for us and the, there's these old jews being like okay what do you think you're doing for us he's like well first of all we're thinking print ads <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you you need to ditch these guys like a bag of dirt yeah you need to get the young kids and you start paying them then they'll start slipping it and you need and like the crap what's TikTok. those two kids that are doing the biden thing <laughs> the Biden thing, the Sisson, Harry Sisson, guy yeah, or Sisson. Yeah, yeah. Those are the kind of guys you need. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. All of these cool streamers, they want nothing to do. Yeah, all and the just, Jews have is fucking Brett Gelman. You, you got Brett Gelman. Literally, you used to be paying him to shut up. That song has been like stuck in my head. I've literally been like walking around my house, like doing chores, and I'm like, from the river to the sea. <laughs> that means that you want to kill me. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, it's etched into my brain. <laughs> Look, I hate him. So you're kind of saying so, it works. I hate him so you're much. You're saying that's his no. uh, stanza. That is his co stanza. It is. Except that I do want to kill. Do you want to kill DP? <laughs> that's terrible. Oh my god. So I I don't know what to tell them. I, if they don't want to help themselves, if your people don't want to help themselves, mm -hmm. I can't really help them. But you lost the kids, right? Yeah. You got the hand of the audience. That's all you got. Uh huh. And so uh, I think there's a lot of people who just are kind of not not uh, chiming in about it because there's no real nothing to gain really. Sure, yeah. but they need a marketing consultant. I mean, I, I, I was talking to a, a friend of mine who you know is uh, also a Jew, and I was like, at this point, I'm like, I don't care. It's like it's a country I've been to once. I'm like, uh, they're a sovereign nation; they can do whatever the fuck they want. I don't care. Like, can I show you? Justin Trudeau. So, do you remember how Biden is like? At, they're kind of at war with you, Russia, but they can't really say it technically because mm -hmm. it's all very like, yes, we're sending over. Yeah, well, they're trying to be like, you know, no, it's not a proxy war and a trillion dollars. Wink. But what do you I, like? Yeah, it's kind of it's a, it's it's very like a technicality. Yeah. Your chick being like. Did you bang this girl? And you're like, no, I, I, no, I did not bang her. It's like, yeah, I went over there and I spent the weekend and she gave me head. Yeah. We, no, we did not have sex. No, we did not have intercourse. This is the guy that's been with the girl for 10 years. They got nine baby mamas. And you go, are you with that girl? And you go, what? With her? What the fuck? I've, it's the Rob Ford thing. He goes, I've been with her. <laughs> yeah. Ask the right question. Ask the right question. So he goes, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I don't she's in my life. It's like a roommate situation. You go, you got four kids. You go, yeah, I yeah, guess. I mean, I guess they're kind of roommates, too. That's these guys with the proxy war, right? They go, yeah. are you at war with Russia? You go, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? But then they kind of do uh, speeches where he'll say stuff like, you know, in our war with, um, in our... In Ukraine's in our, war, yes. with, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's the equivalent of uh, you go to someone. I got a third analogy. You go up to someone and you go, you go, hey, listen, I, everyone thinks you're not funny. Me personally, I don't even have an opinion on it. I just a lot of people have been saying you're really bad at comedy and should quit. <laughs> yeah. And then you go, do you think that? You go, what? Why would no. I? Think? No, I'm just telling don't you. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, what are you? I'm just telling you. Everyone I've talked to thinks you're really bad at comedy. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. And Justin Trudeau did a fucking blunder of the week with uh, Ukraine. So I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if I did. <laughs> so, so I'm getting his booster about ten so minutes ago. He's not. If he can't technically say we want a ceasefire, because now you're making a demand on an alley being like we need a ceasefire you yeah. know what i'm saying so you can't if he says that you're like you're telling them what to do right sure. now it's kind I mean, of that's like, what everybody's saying with israel though that they should do a ceasefire well yeah but that's not that's not the tech well yeah but everyone's saying that america's at war with russia but it's not yeah. the the actual uh, uh um yeah, official yeah. position yeah, of, of course, the united of states exactly right well yeah, this is the same thing trudeau with, did with india he was like it's the position of the Amer the Canadian government that we were pr we pretty much think they were like trying to kill this guy, and then India's like, well, first of all, your diplomats are all banned from our yeah. country. You're banned. Yeah, well, that's what happens. It's like, okay, if you think that, now Canada, like, embassy, like, be hit the bricks. Yeah. Because it's like a whole thing, right? These things kind of have meaning more than just, you can't just like... Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, you yeah, can't just be like, I was riffing, right? Diplomacy is uh, tricky, you know? I guess, yeah. So this is what he says. We need to see a cease... Uh, we need to see a, a humanitarian pause so we can flow. Uh, we need to see ceasing of, of, of the levels of violence that we're seeing. <laughs> Which country um, is even We need about to see <laughs> civilians oh, protected. Okay. He goes, we need to see a cease ceasing of, <laughs> we need to see just like ceasing yeah. of bad 
stuff. Um, that's, if we could <laughs> cease the bullets that are getting shot from guns from both sides, I'm not saying anyone specifically yeah. more than the other needs to cease. I'm just saying a ceasing of bad things sure. happening in the. <laughs> Probably walked away from that being like, God, <laughs> damn it, fucking Justin, I'm fucking idiot. Dude. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's great. I didn't, I didn't see that. <laughs> also, and the last of the politics thing, uh, Ukraine. Uh, the <laughs> Zelensky came out and he was like, "Listen, we need more money." And then basically they were kind of like saying the tap might be getting turned off a little bit. And he was like, if you want to listen, give us the money now. We'll pay you back later. Like he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he kind of did an Oliver twist, yeah, yeah, like yeah. please sir some more. Yeah. And he goes, you know, I'm fucking good for it. Yeah. He's going to put that country into a lot I mean, of I think, too. <clears throat> oh, I don't think they care about that, but uh, I think Putin's winning big time right now. That's he's a big winner. He's a big winner. 2023. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he gets to be friends with Steven Seagal. I mean, is that the win? That's a huge win right there, too. But this is probably like imagine it turns out he had something to do with funding Hamas somehow, and then like <clears throat> this whole thing, he just knew he goes, "Yeah, this will just end the war." Because now, 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 well, now they're saying like everybody's like, "Yeah, it looks like it's time to end the the war. It's time to Ukraine to just give up." It's, we got a new one. Yeah, well, not even that, a new one, but they're like, "Look, they're losing. You've had two years. You're like, it's been basically give it the years. college you, try. You gave it a good college try. You're not going to win this. They're way bigger than you. Like, it's just just let's end this thing and." you know just lick your wounds and go home and uh mm -hmm. maybe they would have not said that had another war broken out but it did i did yeah stole the thunder and some of those people are a little browner so i was just in edmonton and you know how uh just i comment on something we've been talking about i've heard a lot of different people uh making the point that malls are done yeah you know i heard patrick but david kind of said this a couple times and he's usually pretty kind of right on that sort yeah. of stuff but he was basically going oh they're just showrooms now everyone buys everything online yeah edmonton mall by the way so it's one of the biggest malls it's biggest mall in north america it was or the biggest or mall. Uh, how's 23 sound pal what <laughs> it's like the 23rd to what? I don't know, man. It's got fucking bumped I thought down. it was that and the one in Minnesota were the two biggest, the Mall of America. You know, Quebec has on their license plates, we remember. Yeah. I think it's a lot of that situation. Like, just so you know, once upon a time, this was the biggest mall in the world. Like the CN Tower kind of deal. Exactly. So this thing is Not in the world. It was in North America, but yeah, yeah. This thing is so packed full of people. And I think- it an amusement park. Doesn't it have a gun range in it? It's got, you name it. Me and Paul actually went to the aqua massage, which was the gayest and crappiest thing I've ever done Sounds in my life. quite gay. My friend, all that happens is you, <laughs> you just lie there. Yeah. And they spray water on you. I, I quit the thing. It was 20 minutes. I could only do like seven. Yeah. And you basically- you just get pressure washed? Well, yeah. They basically put it like a thing over top of you, like a tarp, and then just pressure wash you but it doesn't do anything yeah and by the way it like pressure washes your ass in a way that's like fucking you're like what are you fucking doing perverts yeah it, we're we're laughing at the idea of like you go because you can stop it on a spot which is if it's working there but it doesn't do anything or just a, a guy comes in to buy a thing it's just four guys lying there with it stopped on their ass <laughs> Because the thing kind of feels, it feels like, I mean, if, if if me and you were hanging out and I post, like, I did like a hose, like a real hard, hard yeah. hose spray on your ass, you'd be like, Ugh. I suppose theoretically I would. Well, you'd like it? No. You'd like the enema? It's this thing. No, I only, I had, I had a, a colonic one time. I had it. it was the well, this thing is done. the biggest piece of shit ever. I've never been scammed more in my life. <laughs> The mall's bumping though. They have a water park. I've been to that mall. That mall's well, this is the reason that I think people that are saying malls are done. There's two things they're forgetting. They only about. said that after COVID, and then they came back because people like to socialize and shit. And like, no, sure, I'm. You know, there's going to be some theories like that. Women be shopping. You know, Women blah blah blah. Be shop. Danny, I got one word for you. Yeah, immigrants. Yeah, they fucking love yeah, malls. That too. This ain't white people fucking cramming up those elevators. Yeah. They love it. They love the malls. Yes, and I think that that's what you're underestimating. Mm. You, all this stuff, you go, who would buy that? A guy from Sri Lanka is fucking mainlining it. Do you think big like and his wife? Do you think all the big mall companies and all the big like real 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 estate like commercial real estate companies? They're the ones behind the immigration they policies. Want, buddy, okay. They're like they're like we need to open the borders. What's up. option two? You think it's going to be like a guy born in New York that wants to occupy a uh, fucking nine thousand? Square foot off brand cologne store? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck that's you think's point. in there? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Selling bottles of cologne the size of a house. Yeah, yeah, like those like Costco styles. My friend? My friend, my friend. <laughs> my friend, these cologne bottles, it, it's legitimately for everyone in the family uses the same cologne and you still have it for life the size of this bottle. <laughs>
This ain't a special occasion bottle. <laughs> this is you yeah, douse yeah. it on yourself it's daily. Like, do you ever have one of those friends who's who had like the Texas Mickey's or whatever? You know, <laughs> that's the size. Like, of like, it. like, oh, and it had like its own little yeah. like, like mount thing that to, that's like, what this to is. Pour it. I'm telling you, my friend. So these guys are these guys are loading into those. Stores. But so you're bullish on the malls. After, I'm bullish on the malls in any city that ain't predominantly white. Yeah, okay. but even then. People travel. Yeah. You talk to some, you know, we're talking to the, we're chatting, shit chatting with the locals. Turns out this guy ain't locals. This is like, well, you went to a mall that's a tourist. This is some guy from Afghanistan and this is like his yearly family trip. Yeah, but that's a, that's a tourist attraction mall too, though. That's not a regular mall. Ain't a tourist attraction mall for people who are like hotel. From. Like when the hotel was in the mall, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. That is correct. Yeah, same with the Minnesota one. It's like you're just, there's a water park and you go, where, where are we going this year for the vacation, family vacation? The mall. Yeah. For a week. Crappy. Someone Something told me like uh, in Edmonton that <laughs> they said that they have two friends and the dude, the girl came out as non-binary and they're like, they're like all about that life. Yeah. And the girl comes out publicly as non-binary and then the next day the guy came out as asexual. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's fucking well played on the dude's part, eh? Yeah. She came out and she goes, you know, I'm not a girl anymore. And the guy goes, crazy. I was just going to come out as something. <laughs> a guy that doesn't have sex with my girlfriend. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And she said it was like kind of a thing. Really? Are well, they still together? Well, it's like... Uh, it's no they no one can ever deny anyone's things right of so it's kind of like you know when larry david and curb your enthusiasm they both lying and they do the thing going like that they have to do a little bit of that mm. business where the girl goes i'm not a girl anymore and the guy goes i'm not a i'm I actually don't have sex i'm asexual and they both go okay yeah. <laughs> a little uh, side eye yeah they <laughs> they have to give each other one of those a little bit. I mean, that's. I, I wonder if they're both pumped for each other. They go, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy good. for you. Oh, so you already posted that? You did your status? Yeah. That is a big I mean, that is. A, there is. They are kind of like a intersectional power couple, though. I've heard this a couple times. Where, yeah, like a little. You know, bit. where they go like, you don't want to be like, what? So I'm non-binary and you're just straight. No, you got to go with something. Cis, but asexual is so funny, and I've heard a couple people do this over the years. But like, when you're in a a, f uh, a known relationship and then coming out as asexual it's like imagine your chick just came out as asexual like what a punch in the face to you <laughs> like you, you was just coming out as like my husband's a bitch yeah i suppose yeah i mean if, i guess if that means like yeah i'm asexual and, and this is and the then, only and then, like but you're like some dumb guy and you go yeah is that like if you're asexual and you go can i go see other and they go no we're in no, a relationship we're in a relationship I'm asexual. I'm asexual and i've never been asexual in a different relationship before sure. only this one yeah. something happened to me during the time that we are together <laughs> that made me re get in I touch with the fact that i never want to fucking be inside me <laughs> yeah that's a tough one i mean if they're not letting you go elsewhere then i guess you got to be like Depends how gross she is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, you could be a blessing. Do not could, have plenty could be a blessing. Could not be a blessing. You know, that's true. Like, that's Al, true. Al, Al, like Al Bundy, if Peg goes, Al, I'm asexual. He goes, Good Peg. Good Peg. Okay, so one last little current events news thing is Mr. Beast is getting it again. Getting it. <laughs> Mr. Getting Beast it. can't post. He can't make a video trying to help people without people finding something wrong with yep. it. Yep. But I honestly just didn't want to comment because I thought it was pretty smart of Mr. Beast because um, he posted, he before he posted the video, he goes, I'm about to release a video helping people and I already know everyone's going to find a reason why something's wrong with it. But yeah. just so you know, I'm not going to stop. Uh -huh. And it was like, it did sort of pull the rug a little bit for people that came out and being like, I don't like this. And he's like, yeah, there, see my tweet that I already right, called yeah, you yeah, out. Yeah, he goes on offense. He went on offense on the yeah. video and it was pretty smart. And the, the things people were coming out, he basically built a bunch of wells in Africa yeah. and they were just like, so what? Africa can't build its own wells. And he was kind of like, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, having trouble in the well department. Yeah, I mean, they can, they just keep, I watched the, actually last night, uh, a video of some African, some Kenyan politician. What videos a, of Africans are you watching late at night? There's a Kenyan politician who's very, <laughs> who's very upset about the whole thing because he's just like, like he's they cocked them a little well he's like well yeah like we have all this money but then they keep like you know the government basically keeps like you know reappropriating it for other shit and duh so, yeah and so he's like we can't afford these wells like, he's, just, he's like we're not some charity case he's like we can afford the wells we just need we just keep spending it money. on other dumb shit <laughs> we just need the money and obviously there's a few people that need a taste yeah exactly like that's the problem with all these bureaucracies i mean even here they hate it when someone starts their own thing and does the service for like a million dollars cheaper than the government of right but there like even weapons people were saying america makes weapons like a thousand times more expensive than yeah, other countries way more expensive here 
Well, yeah, because a lot of people are getting a fucking... Everybody needs a little taste the along big, the supply chain. <laughs> the big man needs a taste. Yep. And then you have... Uh, actually, do you want to play this clip? There's, <laughs> okay, speaking of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. let's play this clip. So, uh, on the topic of Mr. Beast, what happens is all of these places, they basically charge... You know, a thousand dollars probably to do a service that when you have nine consultants and you have a guy hiring the people and then you have a guy hiring the people. Yeah. And then, so I'm just going to post this one. These guys were in charge of like the COVID thing, right? Which was the biggest cash this is the grab thing in, in Canada. History. Yeah. You no, this is the Rivecan app. This is a massive scandal. This is in, in, so in Canada, anybody who traveled into Canada had, they made this thing called the Arrive Can app, which you had to like upload your COVID. Arrive Can app is what it's going to be called. <laughs> they had, you had to upload your like, covid um like vaccine information or like a test and all that stuff into the app before you got to customs like in advance essentially they made this app and they're like everybody coming into canada has to fill out this app and then they made it and it was 53 million dollars didn't work all that good didn't do much it, yeah whatever it's but it was 53 million dollars they gave the contract to these two guys in ottawa who literally all they did is just went and subcontracted contracted out the whole thing for someone that would have costed 50 grand to make this part I, I, yeah maybe more than that but they they still like they pocketed apparently 11 million dollars for just finding someone else to do it what and everybody's like how did you two get the contract like why did the two of you like who the fuck made this decision to just give you surely someone could have outbid you but this is on what, how, thing. yeah this is like legitimately how the game works period of course yeah i mean you go to a guy and you go hey how much did that cost you to make that pistol for the, the ukraine military and he was just like oh that one right yeah, that's a couple of million and yeah. you go why you go oh there's a lot of people involved in that one man the safety guy and then oh we had to the you know taxes, we have a, oh, the inspectors the inspector oh, a lot the of inspectors don't even start me on the inspectors yeah people at the ports of entry and then you go they make these for 50 bucks and you go well, if you want to just make them yeah, with if you cut corners they <laughs> are yeah if you want to fucking shoot someone and then it you know blows up in your face so this Backwards, guy Looney Tune style. Yeah. So this guy got grilled. Yep. And this video, well, the whole thing, but it's just like so funny because they're having a hearing and they're just and then like, he did, and then he did the do? office. Space. He did the office based thing here. I'm not looking for prevarication or distraction. What is it that you do for the government of Canada in exchange for millions of dollars? I don't know if it's exchange for millions of dollars because there's so much overhead to running a bricks and mortars business here in Ottawa, uh, expenses relating to, you know, indigenous employees that I have. Uh, and <laughs> that was my favorite yeah, one. He goes, what'd you do with 50 mil? He goes, I did you play? Then the guy goes, he goes, how many employees do you have? He goes, three. <laughs> he goes, well, one of them's indigenous. And I think you, know, you know how expensive that is? You know what our fucking wampum bill is every month? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fifty million dollars? He's like, I don't know if you heard, but one of our three employees is indigenous. You know how much pemmican costs? <laughs> <laughs> what are the expenses? I thought the expenses would be like opposite. I thought you'd get paid for them. He's, yeah. He's okay, like, you get like a. Grant he's like, well, well, we have to pay the chief like, like a subsidy. A, every, <laughs> once a week, the chief has to come, and not <laughs> fucking not dream. Yeah. Charges oh. by the minute. That's so crazy. Hold on. Indigenous concern. So you don't, you don't have employees. There's two of you who I are do. partners. I do. Yeah, the, and they're indigenous. Two, two, you have two employees. That's what you and told the committee earlier. Yes, okay. that's correct. What and one of them indigenous. What do you not get? It? <laughs> what the fuck do you not get? That's like, yeah, that's, that's literally the office based thing, too. What does your company do? Uh, well, it's a kind of a. So you're asking two things there, right? The, <laughs> the aspect of what I do is an, is an executive on the board of directors for Dalian and looking at governance and the way that the company is, is run on a daily basis. And I've earned that by building the business over 23 years. So uh, no, 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 for what but, we but, do, but sir, there, you're, you're, we, we you're, you're a company with two people, right? Mm -hmm. So so I appreciate that you know you have to pay office expenses and, and you, have, um, you have to manage your partner's activities, I suppose. Um, but what do you do? What does your company do? What, what value does it produces? <laughs> you get the fridge, right? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> what? He goes, the, I actually like this part. He goes, 
well, I have an executive on the board, and I'm, then I've earned that. And yeah. you know, <laughs> he's basically saying like, I've earned the right to like not have to do. Yeah. Do well, something. Well, it's funny because they they uh, that guy I follow him on Twitter. I don't know what his name is, but uh, he he's like some MP from like Saskatchewan, and and so basically he asked <laughs> these two guys like, hey, can you answer some questions for us? Because we want to know why this cost fifty three million dollars for this app, and then they just ghosted him. They just like wouldn't respond. So he's like, all right, well then we're gonna like formally here, call right? you in, and then you have no choice. But to but to talk to us, this guy was on a yacht at that point. Oh, for sure! And obviously, these guys are like, I don't want to have to answer this because I think. <laughs> Do you know how much a diamond encrusted totem pole for the office <laughs> costs? <laughs> But yeah, and I, I think the guy's just like avoiding it as much as humanly possible. But I think they want to just get to like who awarded you? Why was it you awarded this contract? Like, and did they get a kickback? Yeah, obviously that's what they're trying to get to. Is you're like who fucking? <clears throat> but that's America. That's yeah, everywhere. For sure. You know what I mean? That's in Africa and some of those other places. Ukraine. Yeah. Like those places are just like so riddled with people taking their cut, you yeah. know? Well, they were just like literally with the bills that they were just passing in America a week ago or whatever. It, it was like the joke we made maybe recently, but they were like, okay, we want to give money to Israel and Ukraine. And then someone's like, okay, well, we could do that, but we got to like cut back on the IRS. And you're like, what does that have to do with this? <laughs> These are like separate <laughs> things. And someone's like, no, it's like we, we're going to throw in a IRS reduction. And then someone goes, well, okay, well, we're don't want to do that and they, the, um, yeah they like to throw things in that's yeah, for sure just load them on well i'll tell you because i've sort of had uh it's interesting like just watching the obviously there's the one part of it where you know that um the, the bureaucracy always kind of leads to like corruption especially on you know yeah. when it's just blah, 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 they're spending right and left and you know wars are a good like money laundering scheme right but the other part that's even kind of I was thinking a lot of, there is this divide where everyone, uh, because there's so many like little companies doing everything, it's very hard for companies to be like, we're the only ones that could do this. And I've re realized that so much because I have a lot of, you know, even you know, agencies and managers that'll like message me and be like, we want you to talk to this company, they do yeah. this thing. And I have conversations with these social media companies and I do this where they go, they go, oh, we can do this and this and this. And I go, I have a, as there's an SEO guy and this and this. And you go, their whole business model was going to places like CBC or big companies and being like, we got the goods to do social media. We got the goods to do websites. We got the goods to do this. We can film videos. And you go, okay, but like, what is exactly that you're doing? And they're like, we know how to increase views. And you go, okay, what's the technique? Yeah, it's all buzzwords. And but shit. they don't know. They can't Ugh. do anything, right? So I'm talking to this guy. And you kind of, I'm trying to parse out. I'm like, what exactly are you offering me? And he was like, well, we have lots of people that can cut in this. And we do that. And I go, so basically you have like a couple people that like sort of cut videos into socials. And then you can post them for the people just kind of like willy nilly. And he was like. That is part of the strategy. And I was like, okay, well, what is the other part? Yeah. And they, no one can answer. The only thing. I mean, they, if they generally, if someone's pitching you and they can't answer in like two sentences what they do, then you're like, okay, well. And more important than that, though. So that's obviously, that's the part where it's a scam. But the important part is like, okay, so just take us. If someone was send, selling me on like, hey, we do podcasts and we do this. What are the odds that they actually know the business better than me? What are the odds that those people understand like editing in social media yeah. and, and you know, entertainment well. better than me? And even if they do, then they're going to hire someone else that definitely doesn't. For sure. And it's like, I know how hard it is to, you know, hire someone yourself and then sort of like get the vision, let alone, you know, hiring someone that hires someone oh, like, to get sure. a vision. I mean, across. the moment they get, yeah, they'll maybe like their best guy will, you know, like higher and then once you're on board though then they give you all your work off to the new guy who's like the shittiest so, guy so so you go oh we're editing service and you go well, who's the guy is he good and you go it's well it's a bunch of different people and you go so Basically, the whole scam is they need to go to these companies. Like, I'm, listen, when I did my CBC show, I'm doing more content in two weeks for, you know, with a tiny little team than some of these, like, CBC shows were making in six months for a hundred grand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And you, and more than a hundred grand. And, and, you know, and that used to be the game, right? Yeah. So now your whole game is that you go to companies and you expect that they're too stupid to do it themselves, right? Yes. And some, and of, some them of them are. are. Yeah. But I think that's drying up a little bit because the information's so out there, and you go, "What are you selling?" Like, <laughs> you go, "People are oh, selling. Yeah, they're people are selling websites for fucking like twenty five grand that were made on Squarespace yeah. at one point." Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, there's just these little pockets of inefficiency, essentially, that people just try and capitalize on. You know, and you know, uh, I guess if you're playing a numbers game and you go, "Well, I'm going to reach out to." 
every creator on Instagram, then you're like, yeah, maybe you will find some of them that'll just not really know. Or- but the creator on Instagram doesn't work that good. That's that's just like a guy running a hustle, which I which I that I respect because yeah. you're actually just you know you're probably not charging a million dollars. But the you're- scam is you need to find. You need to find these like huge companies and being like, we have this secret technique yeah. that no one will know about. And you go, oh my god, a fucking secret technique! Right. You I go, think I'll talk- you go call the other guy. You go, <laughs> you go, Joe, get in here. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. <laughs> shut up! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> shut the fuck up! I just talked to a social media. Are you wearing a wire? Yeah. I just talked to a social media company, and they have a secret technique. <laughs> I think tons to of make those you go are, viral. I think tons of those are like you work for like Nike or something, and then it's just like your boy from college runs something. And you go, yo, like, you need to hire somebody for this. Just hire me. And he goes, all right. And it's going to cost you because it's going to cost you. So, you might as, and then I'll send you a nice Christmas gift, like, wink, new set of fucking golf clubs or something. It's going to be more than that. Or, or yeah. whatever, you know, like, it's just, you get these kickbacks. I've had some people kick back. Yeah. In my days, obviously, I'm not going to fucking out it yeah. and out it. But I've had people offer, like, film jobs where they're like, do this. But, uh, like, you know, it's a big money gig. But obviously, yeah, of course. A little taste is yeah, coming back yeah, to the big course. man. You know what I'm it's saying? Just, that's how the well, you basically. Works. Yeah, they, you sell a job for twenty grand that probably is worth like six, and you're more than happy to give a guy a couple G's back. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? for sure. Yeah, cash like, money. It's in like a everybody case. wins. Yeah, except for the company. Except for the company, but then they're too stupid. They don't care enough, obviously. You well, know, like, well, yeah, I think that the, the these at, scams at a certain are, scale, the companies are like, yeah, we don't care if it's twenty. These or scams grand. are a little harder to pull off, you know. So I think yeah. that they're most people probably have to find a new scam where they go, maybe AI is the new thing. Like, you got to find new scams because too many people know how to do all the old stuff now. Yeah, there's a, it's an information economy. It's harder to get a harder to get away. Information with Information slash attention economy. That being sure. said, there's still people doing it, getting these you know nine million dollar fucking contract with. Burger King to make their website. Oh, for sure. I mean, look, like every so many TV shows are legit these scams. Mm-hmm. Like, like legitimately, like these like known TV shows are like okay. So you get like less views than a fucking TikTok or like a YouTube page that has a budget of five hundred dollars a week. Like you literally <laughs> get less views than that. You have a team of maybe a hundred people. people. You have like eight writers. You have like union employees. They're and not I- even like these are union employees. And the crazy part is. So some of those shows are a guy talking to camera. Exactly. Like, I know. Like what John Oliver is or whatever. Like yeah. there's probably 8,000 people working on that show. Dude. It's literally a guy making a YouTube video about a topic. <laughs> yeah. Like John Oliver's like electricity bill is higher than the budget of someone who's doing <laughs> like as many numbers as like as many views as him yeah. on YouTube. Like seriously, like you're trying to tell me Tim Dillon doesn't get the same views as John Oliver? I think yeah, probably more. Whatever. Or at least they, a similar, they do a yeah. pretty similar show. Tim Dillon doesn't have writers, and it's like... Well, he doesn't even do an hour show. He just does 10 minutes on a topic where he goes... It's obviously not the craziest, because they do okay research or whatever, but like yeah. that is no different than what, let's say, uh, 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 CoffeeZilla does. Or yeah. Anyone. It's like, here's a video, here's the topics, here's the points, blah, blah, blah. CoffeeZilla's doing like that. real journalism, though. I wouldn't even put that No, in. but I'm just saying in terms of production yeah. and research. Yeah. That's more of yeah, what yeah, 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 for sure. But then anyways, yeah, it's like literally they're probably their coffee costs are higher than like some of these things yeah so i think the jig is up for a lot of people but the jig's probably going to last a long time because it's, it's all about the relationships the jig yeah. right also it's about the and then also it's all about the cable bundling cable bundling is the reason why so many of these things fucking even that's exist. true that's why you're talking about that specific brand of scam yeah well just the anything on tv you're like who watches this why is this on tv this sucks why is any just all the whys you go it's because it's this channel is on a cable bundle and they just get like a piece Can you of imagine money? hiring a consultant to come in imagine when you like hired a consultant to come into the podcast and just kind of kick around he goes you're sitting there he's like <laughs> oh, i'd probably play a switch side <laughs> he goes i'd switch you <laughs> he goes, let me ask, consider a lower back chair let me ask you a question you guys are uh, you guys are coming out on uh, itunes right okay so you have done that you go yeah <laughs> we're on itunes he's like you have a let me ask you a question you have a profile pick on itunes yeah okay you're yeah. gonna want that can i see it Mm, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. people leave reviews. Go, yeah, sometimes. He goes, <laughs> okay, good on you. Yeah, good on that's, you that's, that's one of my techniques. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is one of my tried and tested techniques. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of ca- that was like the the best question ever was like people who are like not like when you ever have a good vi- like video pop off or something and people go like who are like super like in the just the periphery no, of com- entertainment or entertainment no even the people who are like maybe comics but they'll be like an open mic and they'll be like good video uh, uh, what kind of camera do you use go, camera's not gonna help you man <laughs> I'll give you a fucking uh, airy mini or whatever not gonna help you <laughs> this has nothing to do with it <laughs> They always want to know your gear setup, you know. <laughs> 
You're like, that was a pretty funny video. What kind of gear do you use? He goes, it's not going to help you. <laughs> that's, that's the guy coming in here. He's just... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's, that's, that's a solid. That's right there. So okay, sure. so you're probably getting the mic department and these <laughs> mic arms. Yeah. So they just uh, okay. Okay. There's that. Uh, oh, table's a little wobbly. <laughs> yeah. He goes, oh, there you go. Okay, that's gonna. Yeah. Oh, I actually know a guy. I, I know a guy. I know a guy that I can hire to fix the wobbly Down table. Down at the coaster plant. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> he does custom coasters for wobbly tables. Yeah. This, uh, no, he'd be like, we, we need new a, floors in here. That's what you need. Yeah, you, it's the floors that are the problem. And then you get like a foundation guy coming in. Oh, I've had these conversations architects. a million times where the guy's like, how much are you? And I know they're going to these other companies and they're telling them all this bullshit because it's, you know, it's obviously not that simple to just go to like, you know, I, I know I've heard companies where they go, oh, this guy told me the, the consultant came in and said, we have to post four times a day. And it was like, yeah, like there's a. Everything's like an equilibrium. It's like you'd be better off posting once than whatever the fuck this yeah, is. Yeah, four four pieces of shit. Yeah, that's that no one wants to see or whatever. You. And they're anyways, and they go, "We have the secret to go viral." It's like, okay, then why aren't they just like yeah, rich and famous? Exactly. Then? If, they've, if they've got literally the the golden uh, the Harry Potter ring, of course, of uh, going viral. Yeah, yeah. Lord yeah, of the I, Rings. I, I ring. mean, it's pretty obvious. They're just trying to take advantage of a potential. I don't know. Dring, dring. What do you call someone who speaks three languages, Danny? What? Trilingual. Yeah. What do you call someone who speaks two languages, Danny? I thought it was going to be a joke. Bilingual. Well, what do you call someone who speaks one language? What? American. Oh, so the disrespect. <laughs> hey, they're coming with fucking jokes over here. <laughs> Only 22% of Americans speak another language than English at home, so you can start learning a new language this fall and be the exception, not the rule, because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in less than three weeks. People have been saying, why Babbel? Well, the answer to that is because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars, for a private tutor you're fooling around with language and blah, 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 the apps are all over the place Babbel's quick 10 minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks maybe you want to impress that chick maybe you just want to chat with some of the locals mm. maybe it's a family member but Babbel is the one for you Kaktila. that means how are you in Russia. The sound you get when you get it right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been using it, and it's uh, it's a great app to use. It's set up super well. It has these fun little games inside of it. It's, uh, you know, you can use it five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. It just depends on how quickly you want to learn that language. With 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel's real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. If you start right now, you get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash boyscast. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash boyscast and that is spelled b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash boyscast rules and restrictions may apply and Daniel Polishuk you might be asking me what am I doing what are what you doing are you doing this right here is a little something something we call Backscaped. You yeah. might be asking, what is it? Well, it's the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. Here, I'll just do a little on your head just okay. to give people. <laughs> well, let's give people. A it's little. not headscaped. It's backscaped, Brian. Oh, yeah. well, that's true. You actually, you know, there's people walking around there. I'm not going to say what, well, you know, what type of ethnicity they yeah. have, for example. But they're walking around. You see, you ever see these videos? You see people on the internet sometimes. They got like a basketball jersey on, and it's yeah. just like every comment is like, "What are you doing, buddy? Yeah, were you wearing a sweater there, pal? You wearing a sweater there, Underneath pal? The basketball jersey? It's a bit much. It is. You got a freaking tarp on your arms. Uh huh. So that's the problem. And these people, so arms is, I think most, a lot of guys, you get the back of the arms. Yeah, the back of the <laughs> arms. Yeah. So backscape, hassle free back grooming you want to look good for the ladies you know Absolutely. what i mean you don't want to be and it's just up. tough to get back there it's, it's, just so it's almost impossible to get back there uh, until now that's how you end up falling in the shower <laughs> <laughs> i've fallen and i can't get up just because you didn't have a back skip yep. so you can do it solo you do it in five minutes every now and then you don't even need to go on this puppy every day you know what i mean you give it take it for a spin every week if yeah. that's probably what i would do absolutely bid farewell to the back hair with backscape give it a try head on over to backscape.com slash boyscast. Check this out. Also, Christmas present. Come on, you tell me that's not a good Christmas present? Yeah, solid present. One of those. Hey, Christmas is coming up. Hanukkah. To a certain hairy man in your life. Uh -huh. You go, Dad, everyone's been talking about it. Backscape.com slash boyscast. Mm -hmm. So, Michael Douglas. You familiar with Michael Douglas? I'm very familiar. Duplicity? Yeah. So Wall Street? <laughs> Duplicity. <laughs> Multiplicity? Michael Douglas, lead actor from du Multiplicity. That's Michael Keaton. 
It's one of the Michaels. Wall Street. I. I thought Money he never sleeps. Okay, Michael Keaton. Yeah, who is multiplicity, the best Batman. Yep, and then Michael Douglas. Beetlejuice. Everyone was yeah. Everyone was having a good laugh at Michael Douglas because he said he got cancer from eating box, right? Yeah, Catherine Zeta Jones. Exactly. Everyone goes ha 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 ha. That's for example how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, yeah. this guy was bang on the money. Mm. And the surgeons have started to come out. All these studies came out basically being like, you have a pretty good chance. So this is a for the, for the boys thing. Because yeah. all this, <laughs> a bunch of dude surgeons got together. This is, really, well, this is, to be fair, this is for the black boys. Why is it black boys more? Well, this is the, okay, we'll go tell Oh, them. I see what you're yeah, saying. Because yeah, yeah. black guys don't like to. to eat, eat, eat the vagines. The, the, no, that's Jamaican more than oh, black. okay, okay. It's so, Jamaican. Sorry. Well, that's the old thing. It's like, but for real, it happened. As Jamaican guys have said, eating pussy's gay. You're gay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamaicans are one step ahead of the game. Look at this fucking well. Tell you what, it's gay the way that I do it. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's gay, but it's fucking maybe gay the way that I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Put a condom on it. <laughs> so. They said, okay, the human, the American Cancer Society even said the potential cause of throat cancer and the reason is because of HPV yeah. is transmitted during the act and like everyone has HPV now basically, yeah, right? it's like pretty much 100%. And I guess you get it on your throat and that's really... The uh, juices get it. There's an estimated 13 million new cases each year. The ju <laughs> juices... <laughs> <laughs> Men are more likely to develop cancer, but how funny is that now? Indication. A chick's like, eat me out, and you're like, you're trying to fucking give me cancer? <laughs> so Rather fucking have a carton of smokes. Yeah. Be safer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why don't I just smoke for the next 10 years? Why don't I put a fucking warning label on this thing? Now you do me. <laughs> Ain't no fucking cancer in dick. Hey, no. No. <laughs> See, no, it's better for you. The men are more likely to develop throat cancer performing oral sex on women as women are more likely to carry HPV. So all these girls have HPV. Yeah. So lesbian relationships. Oh, they're fucking. If they had sex with each other. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You're, yeah. yeah, they're basically saying eating pussies like fucking pack of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> they're all be fucking eating through the holes in their necks. <laughs> Eat my pussy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do they gotta put the hole on the pussy? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I wish I never started. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I wish I never started eating pussy. I do think they'll have that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be like the, the the guy who worked in the the smoke shop yeah, or whatever. Yeah. He goes, I just don't turn out like me. I just thought it was a cool thing to do. <laughs> I was getting peer pressure. She said, "I always do you. You never do me." <laughs> the peer pressure was too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches be pressured. <laughs> Bitches be pressured. <laughs> Kids don't eat box. <laughs> Mowing muff <laughs> is the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> Every morning oh. I regret it. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> snowbird towns are fucking riddled with HPV. Oh, yeah. Big time. Every time you go to a snowbird town, a fir like Whistler or fucking... What's the one here? I don't yeah, there's one here though. The Aspen, oh, maybe Aspen, but I was thinking of a different one. We need snow like Mount like Saint something. Oh, uh, Vermont. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know ski towns. Vermont, but Stratton. every t what? Stratton, no chemo, Mount Saint. Okay, every time you go there, Invermere was another one. Every time you go there, like you start hanging with the locals, and people will always tell you, like, just so you know, it's the highest STD cap yeah, rate yeah. this side right. of the fucking county. Yeah, it is. Start to take yeah. pride in it a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit of a humble brag. Yeah, sort of a humble brag. And I'm fucking doing my part to keep it that <laughs> way. Yeah. But I thought that was crazy. So, okay, there's two different ones a right wing one and a left wing video. Mm. Where our videos uh, have become uh, a, a real thing that happened, which is always my favorite yeah. thing. And people usually send them. But basically, we did the one with the polyamorous dad with L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And this is, my dad partakes in tantric sex events and calls me to talk about it. Ugh. Here's why I like it. So the girl, the girl's sort of a wacky, wacky one herself, right? Yeah. She's, well, she's, she was raised by Polly dad, right? So that's how. Yeah. That's just how it is. He was one of those dudes walking around like, no, never wore any underwear. Nothing. Totally naked. Just putting his leg up on the counter. Just balls. Do you see that video of the trans girl that's doing that? She's like a nudist, but she's trans. And there's all those videos of her walk, like bopping around the house and all the kids are there. I think a lot of people were posting it being oh, like. Oh, I think I saw. Being some, like, this is unacceptable. But yeah, just, I think I saw. I think I saw that. Fucking what kind of freak does that. Yeah. Cuts their dick off and then walks around naked in front of kids all day long. <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> Yeah. Do you think that's if you have a really small one, you cut it off, and then you're fucking like you had a micro, and yeah. then you cut it off, and you're just like, what was it like before? And you're like, I had a python. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lying about it. You go, no, you didn't. You don't even know, dude. This was a fucking cup flump. Yeah, it was a big one. I had. That's the reason I had to cut it. It was giving me back problems. <laughs> it was nothing to do with. I mean, I guess I don't know. Is it that much different than if your like family's in, like a nudist colony just because you're trans? That's a little grosser, I think. It's, I mean, it's for sure <laughs> grosser, but is it like from a maybe moral ethical position? Is it? I don't know. It's definitely gross. No, nah, I, I I understand what you're saying, and I think that's probably. I don't know about moral ethical, all that stuff. I'd have to think you'd have to go person by person. But what I will tell you is, you probably have to go if you look at the case and you look at this one. You go, "This is a fucking weirdo." Yeah, for sure. But by the way, nudist is a little weird. Period. Yeah, hundred percent. And I. Sp- I'll, I'll, like if, if, if it's any sort of not like if this is your stepkids or whatever, completely ridiculous. Yeah, like if you have like you know kids and your kids are like, yeah, I'm going over to the nudist family's house. You're like, no, you're not. Like you're not being friends with the nudist family. Did your parents ever walk around naked? No. My dad was not too afraid to. Like an underwear and stuff. <laughs> My dad used to have the fucking house coat and that 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 fucking thing would come undone. <laughs> I mean, that is a man not afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a nice little, <laughs> just a nice little breeze. We're talking about you ever, you ever tie a fucking bow where it's like, yeah, yeah. it's just like you're like just so like just any breeze is popping that thing undone. <laughs> <laughs> happens, happens. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. House coats are ridiculous. Do you think you could be, ever be a house coat guy? Like a robe? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not a robe guy. House coats were kicking in my house. I'm not a big robe guy. I've never been a robe guy. Like, whenever I go to a hotel and my girl will be like, they have robes. I'm like, the oh. fact that people, men used to wear, grown men used to wear pajamas always fucks me up. Pajamas are insane. Yeah. Yeah. Just being like a grown it's too man. Hot. And you put on a fucking nightcap to go oh, to sleep. Oh, the nightcap's like- the craziest <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the nightcap's insane. But, like, I don't know. It's just too hot. And- well, I guess it was cold, maybe. That's the reason but just being a grown man and t- like going back get ready to sleep and then you put on some pjs that are that are actually put on a suit yeah but yeah yeah you put on <laughs> put on all suit button up your suit yeah you're like crazy it's bizarre yeah i wonder if it's even true it was just propaganda for the from the pj companies uh i don't know i don't know i feel like charles dickens era that was they were all what the I see they, the, the, the history will tell you, but we know we can't always believe what we say. History telling you there wasn't a guy in sight without a PJ. Yeah. So no, the no, king's no. putting on PJs. Yeah. But then that was also like, you know, they didn't have <laughs> synthetic fabrics and stuff. And like, you ever see. Uh, you're wearing a bed sheet. But you ever see like a photo of like a construction crew in like 1900? They're all wearing three piece wool suits. Like, it was just different back then. <laughs> <laughs> like literally working on a construction site, just like three piece suit. <laughs> well, seems overkill. <laughs> Middle of summer. Well, the Polly nudist dads are weird, but this guy goes, "My phone flashes. It's my dad." I answer, "Hi, dad." Uh, he goes, "Hello, Sprout." He still uses my childhood nickname, even though I'm in my mid thirties and he's thirty six. I had an absolutely wild time at the tantric retreat this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Deeply moving stuff. We started a cuddle party. Let me ask you a question. Do your Russian parents ever indulge you into the intricacies of their sex life since they're still together? Absolutely not. Your mom never calls you and it's like, Daniel, call him back. I'm walking funny. (laughs) I've been given good. Uh, No, no, no. Russians are very cold. They're not as bad as like... They're not co- because they have the European in them. Because you know, like been eating his vitamins. You, you know, like Chinese kids will be like, "I've never said hi to my dad." <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like they're just like a next level where they're like, "I've ne- my dad's never praised me ever. I've never said hello to him. We've never touched. <laughs> Maybe like a sh- handshake once <laughs> accidentally when I graduated. Yeah, yeah. Like he went to go give me the car keys and we accidentally touched hands. Yeah, go, that was like the extent of my. You go, okay, that's 
not european i don't think they're that bad but they're just they have a general yeah you're kind of yeah you're, you're closer to that side it's just communism that does it to you <laughs> it makes you cold yeah it makes you cold you go this could be a communist are all just like see this this could all be gone just so like would your cats. mom be very embarrassed if sex came up in the house uh, or just wouldn't like just, would she, if, if, if sex came out on the tv would she fucking turn it off no nah, no would she do something really like just i i do remember when i was a kid we went and saw i think it was a river runs through it with i think brad pitt and i, I do remember this because there was a sex scene and she did but i was like must have been seven or eight and she put like the hand over my eyes kind of thing <laughs> i do remember that that was and i go thank you thank you mother <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. Thank you, mother. <laughs> Thank you, mother. <laughs> These propagandists trying to show me the sex. <laughs> I've got. Well, anyways, this is a freak. I've gotten some pretty strong reactions from friends who don't think. <laughs> Alice, that's disgusting. He's your dad. Uh, it seems weird. And then she goes, What? What's weird? I've yeah. my dad going to his sex club and then giving every last detail. Yeah, like again, if you go, it's one thing to be like, I kind of think my parents are swingers. And you go, I kind of like have clues. It's another thing your dad calling you like, hey, uh, whew, <laughs> you mind, <laughs> this might be a bad time. You go, dad, is this a bad time? <laughs> Actually, it's a fine time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like at a party and it's like hey do you know where the bowl is we're all trying to put our keys in it so that we can all fuck different people tonight and you go, oh god <laughs> nah, Jesus. do you also this is the only thing that i was thinking because this girl's fine with it she grew up in the household or, or she didn't but she's all about the stuff she's the type of girl that thinks this is cool yeah. do you think this was a possible ploy from the dad being like i gotta turn her normal you know because she's a slut and she goes well let's see how you like it and the dad goes hey yeah i'm just out of tantric sex event how do you like it? and she's like i love it and he's like fuck like he was trying yeah, to do the no he seems because he the whole thing i guess is he was like suicidal. the dad being woke to try to turn you yeah, off yeah but it. he's like i think one element of the thing she keeps saying her dad has been suicidal so then i think you're just like now you're now walking on eggshells just just like my fucking but it's the dad is and i think it's because he's like well he was suicidal and then you're like well if this is what makes him not kill himself i guess i feel like if your dad's single and you're a grown man it's a little <laughs> less weird yeah yeah for sure i guess yeah if your dad's just like hey i'm single you know i'm smashing but this there's been time where my dad was single stuff. and i was single yeah this hit the golf course just fucking who'd you take yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. smell my fingers <laughs> smelling each other's fingers <laughs> um there's been times where the boys were both singing yeah <laughs> Um, but like, yeah, I don't want to know about the the freaky stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, you don't like I don't uh, the details. <laughs> it's so gross. It's not necessary. <sighs> your mom gives good head. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Daniel. <laughs> you know, you know, what my uh, nickname for your mom is Hoover. <laughs> Bit of a vacuum. <laughs> sucks it. Sucks me. Oh, gross. Yeah. My friends are embarrassed when I tell them about it. So she's so open. She's telling her friends about her fucking dad getting fucking tuned up. I've been chatting about how we both struggle to stay present during sex. Shut up. Because <laughs> intimacy is overwhelming. So her and her dad are having convo. Imagine telling your daughter that. Ugh. I'm struggling to stay present during sex. Like, for example, right now I'm on the phone. <laughs> I mean, I guess if like this is like if you grew up in like a hippie commune kind of thing, like totally, yeah. But and everyone bangs the one guy who runs the commune. Yeah, the head, the top cheese. They might think this level of honesty is a bit too much, but I'm happy. But yeah, telling your having questions with your dad about techniques that you use to stay present during sex. You know, hang in there. He goes, give me the earpiece. The dad puts her on a earpiece. He goes, stay there, stay there in the moment. Yes, yes, stay, stay. <laughs> you are present. You are you are here. You are being pleasured. You are it's coaching her. You exist. <sighs> you are one with the Punani. <laughs> yeah. This is hippy dippy shit's too much. That's gross. So here's the other one. Yeah. Uh, this was the sketch I did where I basically said uh, the right wing sponsors is all Patriot Water yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. <clears throat> water brand aims to tap the anti woke market, and they have a water company that's made from liberal tears. Right. This is insane. This is like that stupid beer that came out that was like right right wing beer, <laughs> Patriot beer or whatever. What right? Like, totally. Someone tried to capitalize on the Bud Light thing, and then they're like, <laughs> "This is why whenever things happen and people are being like, oh, what side are you guys on?' You're like, <clears throat> what? It's never choose anything because in, within a year it'll be gay. Yeah, for sure. I'm not <laughs> because once the money starts pouring, once it once there's money to be made, 
in America, you can guarantee that it's going to be taken to the absolute extreme Ugh. when there's a profitability to yeah. be had. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, and not in like a cool, like ethical manner, like organic way. You're just like, this is purely just to make money. Do you and know what it's rip called? People off. Freedom 2.0. <laughs> Freedom 2 O, sorry. Freedom F2 O. F2 O. <laughs> so fucking. <good. laughs> I mean, that's the thing, too, is like if you're buying it, like, what do you, why? Like, why do you buy it? Like, are there woke waters? Because you don't want water that's going to put fucking diverse characters in your Disney you, movies. But you know what I mean? Like, I guess, like, is Poland Springs or whatever? Like, are they, like, you know, they give all their money to trans and kids. Freedom water. Listen. This is a, this is a can of water that's gonna read Huckleberry Finn in its entirety, <laughs> and this water ain't skipping any words. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. When you open up a, a bottle of Freedom Water, oh beautiful, Fosbury. <laughs> this water knows exactly how many genders that there are. Hmm. <laughs> that's good shit. The right only there. thing that I take that I take joy in. <laughs> Danny. Uh, here you go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> the only thing I take joy in is that that this person spent a ton of money on this. And they're, you go, ah, tastes like the innocence of David Chauvin. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> <laughs> tastes like the innocence of Derek Chauvin. Yeah, that's something you can cheers to. <laughs> now that's, and that's something <laughs> you can drink to. <laughs> Freedom water. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> this water doesn't think Kyle Rittenhouse is guilty. That's for fucking damn sure, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah and then there'll be like something where there'll be like left left wing people will be protesting and starting fires and you go no it's good for putting out those fires freedom water yeah yeah freedom water this is <laughs> this is yeah like a fire truck but it's like not a real fire no. truck comes up with do you remember the kylie water? jenner uh, protest where she opened remember up the a can pepsi? of pepsi and yeah, the protest yeah, yeah, starts yeah, yeah. And they open up a can of water and they put out the fire on like just a, a man's gun shop yeah. you know that was getting torn <laughs> yeah, down yeah, by yeah. blm protesters yeah, yeah. <laughs> a dick sporting goods is being looted or a target <laughs> oh they don't like dicks i think uh oh all oh, right they don't like dicks i think the guy from dicks who came out and he was like yeah the ceo was like into something he's into something what they didn't like <laughs> yeah i, I can't remember what he's check, into actually but yeah, is it yeah a check i think that's i think so i can't remember they it's, were into something wacky though there's always a new thing with this shit but yeah free water even though we're giving them free promotion right now it's gonna time for the anniversary of ronald reagan's most significant speeches got a times square billboard um uh for liberals they say you should drink this water uh, a six pack for 11 bucks and if you don't like it you should go back to canada this hit one point canada what are they attacking Canada for? What did Canada Cole, do? Why don't you go fucking go back to Canada if you don't fucking want to fucking hoser? taste your freedom? What did we do? I don't know. That seems uncalled. So this, this, that's, that's I mean, kinda, probably Mexico. Mexico was the original. I called Freedom Water fucking two years ago. Mexico was probably the original copy. And then someone goes, that's a little aggressive for water. <laughs> Let's go Canada. Canada water. It's like, you know, nobody's going to get too upset about that. Have you seen the big uh, um, debate right now in the conservative spaces as if abortion is a losing issue for Republicans? Well, they just had a big, uh, I think, Ohio last night. Uh, they, <clears throat> they had elections. It's so crazy here, too. Like, they have a elections in america and like i saw some signs being like vote here and i'm like i didn't even know what it was for and then there's like some of them are announced a lot and some of them they don't talk about but i guess they had some sort of governor race in ohio yesterday but then yeah abortion was the big thing and then i think they like passed abortion in ohio for everything like well, that's why they were talking the about it i yeah, guess yeah. i actually didn't know that yeah that's what i'm saying it's like they'll have like these fairly like important i just saw elections about it. yeah these and then you go like i just was walking somewhere uh, the other day, and then there were all these signs saying, like, vote here. And I'm like, for what? Well, Ann Calder said, uh, I thought that was, you know, Ann Calder. I do know. She her. said that um, uh, abortion is defund the police for Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, like, again, people can argue it or not argue, it, and people have their own beliefs. And I guess their argument is like, well, this is what I think, so I don't care about winning elections, blah, blah, blah. What I care about is this is what I think. Yeah. I, I think the actual thing is the, like, the commentator people, like the Matt Walsh kind of types, who's mm. a big one arguing about it. They're actually, whether they win or lose doesn't affect them. Yeah. It's like if you actually. Yeah, I mean, he's not up for election. Right, right. So to be honest, like they There's actually. A contract. Sometimes they might even do better 
uh, as a like they're it might actually be better for their career to be the opposition sure and it's like in his defense that is what he believes he's not like flip-flopping where he changes like with the wind like he's like he's consistent he goes that's what he believes and so that's what he believes right it's but y- but i'm t- i'm saying incentive wise yeah you couldn't be a politician and just being like i don't care about losing elections yeah of course so you can, I mean, only, that's, you can only say that when it actually your job is not to become elected yeah right? yeah yeah for sure well i'll just say listen i've said this before i mean there's so many people that I, i've kind of said this this is the problem with both parties is i say sometimes they'll say stuff i agree with and then once they get in or like but then their main issues are never the ones you care about yeah like republicans are always like we'll spend less but that's never what they do what they actually do is they try to like push these culture things nobody ever i don't think less. me or any of my friends really agree with no no, the, no like, nobody ever spends less i don't think so maybe some get some sort of tax cuts or something but Ideally, but uh, well, yeah, and then the yeah, the, but so the abortion the, thing is like most people in America, like in terms of the actual no abortions under any circumstance crowd, it's very small. Like, I think that's you're talking 10, 20 percent, yeah, but as soon right. as but it's the same thing, I think this is what it's just the now it's the definition making. of how long, but if you look at sort of uh, you could probably say somewhat of the same thing about the defund the police or those sort of things, like, but the I guess when you have the commentator crowd, it always becomes like a purity competition, right? Yeah. Like it becomes like, I'm actually more against abortion than you. He goes, this guy's not even against it as much as I am. Right. And then it becomes, so it becomes like a race to who can be the most. Of yeah. The, and jockeying for, yeah, that kind of. Right. So then, it, so then it's almost like you get kicked out of the discourse unless you're enough of the thing, right? Yeah. So I think that's why all those issues sort of become to the forefront because. Yeah. And I mean, abortion is just one of those, one of those things that just, for the most part it's just uh, everyone i mean everyone has an opinion there aren't a lot of people but that's like, why i think there's about it. that's why it's a win it probably takes someone that's not afraid of their base like probably whether you like trump or not trump he was a guy that was like this is what i'm doing you have to trust me and then people were like well he's not this and this and this and he'd be like well go fuck yourself as yeah. opposed to being like please like where's ron DeSantis is more like, well he he's like what guys what, what are we doing didn't trump actually I uh, kind of come back on it a bit because di- he's essentially the reason why they repeal Roe v. Wade. But then he's like, I'm not actually like anti anti abortion. Well, I think he, he, he probably was more wants like to from, win the election more well, he, than he wants for to sure. like make some. St- but so people were but like, saying, I don't think like he how cares could you say, say? Yeah, but he was the he, yeah. He's more like he's like yeah. I don't care what like what I consider to be yeah, fringe goes, like, commentary. Says I'm trying to win an election. Yeah, and he's like well, the states decided. But then he's also kind of the reason why they repeal Roe v. Wade. So. But it does, yeah, I think that it does really feel like uh, the uh, in the social media age, it's impossible for somewhat of, like, the purity competition to not just keep happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's th- That's kind of the nature of it. Well, everybody's trying to get the most likes. And- I think that's why people like even the, what the, like, an Elon musk type, I think. If there was someone like that, that might be when really good like basically tech politics i think would be like a pretty good like centrist sort of one yeah it might get a lot of support yeah i yeah, guess the, the, yeah centrism is hard because it's just like i don't know nobody everybody likes to be on a side and that's just not well a you side. don't really get to be centrist because if you run you have to sort of run for a that's thing that's what i'm saying and it's just like that's not even if they go hey we're gonna like i mean i don't know we'll see with rfk i guess rfk is polling like pretty surprisingly well like everybody keeps being shocked at how well he's polling and he's as an independent i guess he's gonna but i'm not even saying you have to have your opinions on them i I think more though and this is the last thing i'll say we'll move on because it's probably boring but the last thing i think about it is the trick is probably from a winning election standpoint the trick is you go i agree with you but those aren't my issues yeah you know what i mean you're kind of like I agree with you, but that's not what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You go, yeah, my, here are my main things. Here are the real problems in this country, and we can deal with those later, but these aren't the main. These are my main things. Yeah. So you're sort of uh, being like, hey, to your base, you're sort of going like, yeah, I agree with you, but uh, and then, then you just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you go... And then the, in the back of their mind, they go, well, maybe he'll do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, maybe he'll do something. You like but, almost dog whistle to but them. again... You dog whistle to them? You know, like, same with the def- like the defund the police people or something like that. You'd have to be like dog fund, like you dog whistle. You're like, a lot of problems over there, but you're not actually planning yeah, on yeah, doing yeah, anything yeah, about but, it. But you kind of maybe open the potential. Like, you're like, I'm not a... They feel seen. Yeah, they feel seen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think people need to feel seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how everybody's turning on Biden right now. Actually, who's everyone? All the people on the left who voted for him because he won't do a ceasefire. He's not calling for a ceasefire in Israel. I saw that black people don't like him anymore. Nobody but. likes him. It's uh, <laughs> hilarious though because you're just. But everybody's like, he's not calling for a ceasefire. And like, wait, do you think Trump would call for a ceasefire? Like, nobody would call for a ceasefire in America. Uh huh. Like, I don't know what candidate that is. They're, they're mad that I guess they're like, well, you should have. 
AOC. You, well, I'm talking about presidential candidates. Like, but I'm saying like everybody's like mad that he's not. And you're like, I don't know. Nobody who he who was running for the Democratic Party, I think, would have either. No, no, probably not. I mean, even if they wanted to, they probably like it was not some deep state shit too. Even if they tried to, I guess. I guess the idea is they can, you know, they can just threaten Israel to go, hey, that Ohio sub thing or whatever that was we threatened Iran with, we'll just threaten you with, fucking nuke it. I'm gonna take a second here to tell you about Quip, and I actually have a personal anecdote because we've been going to the dentist for the first time in a while mm, in New yes, York. We, we finally have a dentist now. He's a family friend of Danny. He's yes. a girl. Yeah, yeah. And when I went there, they're asking, "Do you do this? Do that?" And I basically was telling telling her we have quip because we do a sponsorship and i was telling her about the electric toothbrush and she goes oh yeah yeah quip's a good one quip's a yeah. good one so the dentist was happy with dentist quip. approved Dent- <laughs> definitely this dentist approved it mm. she was happy with quip and she does like the service so basically good health starts with good habits quip makes it easy by delivering the oral care essentials you need to care for your mouth right to your home and give you all the fixings. So the electric toothbrushes, we're talking timed sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean, a lightweight sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky chargers to weigh you down. So actually that's what happens. I have the charger somewhere else and then I have the brush in my little slot yep. on my shower. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter. They got reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues as well as bright plastic colors sure to make a pop on your bathroom counter skip the batteries and snap into health habits with the new rechargeable electric toothbrush all the features of the original quip plus one magnetic charge powers up to three months of brushing so it stays in there you know you're taking it out four times a year this is nothing folks i actually had one with a battery before and you don't want nothing to do with that so in addition to the brush heads quip also delivers fresh floss toothpaste, mouthwash, gum refills, and the gum's nothing to laugh at either. Decent gum. Yeah. Every three months for from $7. So if you go to getquip.com slash boyscast right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, water flosser at getquip.com slash boyscast. That is G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash boyscast. Cast. Quip, the good habits company. Well, there was one more um, uh, 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 the same thing the other way where there's a pawn shop and they're basically uh, tr- using female empowerment to sell wedding rings. Yeah. So they basically go, website called Worthy is aiming to give pawn shop a makeover of female empowerment. But they're so they're the opposite of this, right? Yeah. The opposite this, of Freedom this, Water. They're very much for the boys. <laughs> this is so for the boys. <laughs> yeah, they're like a- making me convulse. <laughs> <laughs> they're going like are you a strong independent woman who's going through a divorce like get rid of that wing stick it to that guy also we're giving you one eighth of its yeah. retail value it's so funny though because this is how stupid <laughs> chicks are about this stuff as someone who just recently purchased a fucking ring like six months ago uh, cock ring <laughs> dad's birthday is coming up <laughs> but as someone who also purchased and like my girl do it like through the whole process she's like oh yeah it's like this is such a good deal I'm like no it's not <laughs> It's not a good deal. Like, she knows that. She's in your no, fucking ear. No, nah, look nah, at you getting a deal. No, 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 no. Whoa! Look at this, like, de- there's look at this deal dude, he's and, getting. And the no, no, no and because of the Diamond District, we're not far from the New York City. I bet no. you she went there before and she planned it out. She's like, listen, I want you to show him these five first, and then once he makes this face, bring out this one and be like, I mean, we have this one that's really on no, sale, no, but you no, probably no, don't no, want no, that. No, no then, this is no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about a deal relative. Like you go by there, and then the Diamond districts in new york city is like you know one of the most densely it's diamond districts in the world right like it's every store sells the exact same thing mm-hmm. like which is a diamond What's the diamond district just like the jewish area yeah it, i mean it also of- i mean you say that but yes <laughs> no, but I've seen a lot of guys with the last name diamond <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i mean a lot of guys are just like straight <laughs> so rabbis the three three time diamond district <laughs> yeah yeah the triple diamond triple d's <laughs> the triple fucking black dude <laughs> um but literally they'll be like oh yeah this diamond's like such a great deal like i promise you're getting like this, i'm getting and, robbed and, and, he, no, goes, but they, he they, goes honestly <laughs> i'm pretty close to calling the cops <laughs> Because I'm going to have to call the cops on you because the robbery that you're perpetrating on me right now. <laughs> and, then, and then your girlfriend, and they also, your girlfriend's like, don't do it. Please don't call the cops on him. Sorry, let's just get the ring and dude, get out of here. Dude, the, and the whole thing too is in the in the diamond. Like if you ever, like I, I watch a lot of like watch 
TikToks about watches because I'm I don't wear watches. When did this start? They I don't know. I just guy. I'm not a watch guy. When I hate this, wearing them. When did I this just, new there's personality some, quirk I, start? I, I, there's something about them that interests me, but it's funny. <laughs> Watchmen. Or I, or I see the TikToks and then whenever they make a deal, they go muzzle. And then uh, Andre Kim, I was talking. And the other guy says Toff? No, no, they go muzzle, oh. muzzle. And, the, and the, <laughs> but it is all like legitimately like this. They're all Jews. And uh, but so the, the guy when you sell, he goes, you know, this is the this is the retail price. He goes, this thing over at Tiffany's, you bought over here would be this much. He goes, but I'm giving this is the wholesale price. He's like, this is a great price. And, and, and they make you think you go oh this is the price but like, if i left there and i go okay well i'm gonna go, i bought a ring for x i'm gonna go next door he's making it seem like i could sell it for x when in fact they were gonna give quarter. me a quarter of what i just paid for even though it's like worse than a car right even though i just bought it like it's the biggest scam perpetuated but, the, in the they, but these the chicks in this article are like oh i tried to sell them my my ring because i got divorced and they would only give me 25 because that's what it's actually worth you got scammed like that's the whole thing's a scam and then you're just mad that you're finding this out like yeah that's what it's worth well that's true i see what you're, you're saying is these girls left there they're like i left my relationship but luckily one thing i do have is this twenty thousand dollar yeah, ring and, and you go like, uh, i got last year to the store yeah, not so fast he goes he oh goes, you are an independent woman he goes <laughs> and he, she goes are you sure you're all, this is only worth fifteen hundred dollars? He goes, look at you. You're an independent <laughs> woman, just sticking it to the world. No man can tell you what to do as he's like, yeah. take grabbing. Then just get that credit card over here. No man <laughs> could ever tell you. And she goes, what? why? Why are you rubbing your hands like that? Is your <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, but this no. is the best deal. Look at yeah. you getting a fucking deal. Why are you deal. doing this? Um, These guys are used car salesmen. Have you ever seen one? Eh? But it, well, the thing is, is like, but it's the chicks who have all fooled each other because they've set this like scenario where they all have to get a ring, and then you know, like, it's just the, it's just not worth that stuff. But they all just inflate it with their, I don't know, just the fact that they require it to be purchased. Definitely you know? one of the biggest scams. Like obviously, like the mankind. price of gold is you can melt down gold, and that has a price that's pretty close to the. Actual value. Or I know you're trying to do it. Danny thought saw some gold on the writing in the mic, and he started. <laughs> I saw him in here with a fucking blowtorch trying to get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but diamonds and shit are like, pfft. man, that's that's just a scam. You seen Danny finish a gold slogger bottle? Get the fucking strainer out. <laughs> that's a, the only. Th <laughs> the only thing I could do to piss my girl off is because she made me buy this ring. Is I'd just be like, she'd be like, people would look at a ring and be like, yeah, I bought it on Amazon. It's fourteen bucks. <laughs> I tell all her friends, I go, I bought it on Amazon. It's fourteen dollars. Can you believe it? That's a good little gag. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all I could do to win. <laughs> so the, this is how I win meme. You know, me and Paul were laughing about because Paul came to Edmonton with me. We had a thing. We were saying this years ago, but after you have a like you have a really fun night like drinking with like a bunch of guys it's but it's like one of the guys that you don't normally hang with yeah. and then the guy calling you in the morning being like yo we still up for lunch today and you have to be like hey listen man about yeah. last night <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're not like just friends now let's, let's, listen let's, last night we had fun you yeah, know what i mean yeah, it was yeah, a, yeah. a break to break up for the guy yeah. and we're also saying that um let's keep it going we're saying he sends you the you up text in the morning yeah, like you're supposed yeah. to get breakfast <laughs> <laughs> listen pal we Great night last yeah. night. We we both had fun, you know. We danced. We we did karaoke, right? Yeah, shots we'll, together. I mean, we'll see each other around. We'll see each other around for sure. But that funny having to do the the uh, the the breakup after the one night stand <laughs> with a, a friend. <laughs> I just don't know if this uh, golf trip's going to be happening. There. Yeah, yeah, that trip to Cabo, that was we maybe got a little ahead of ourselves on that one. No, nothing against you. You're a great guy. I'm yeah. sure another man would love to take you to Cabo. <laughs> <laughs> You guys will have the best time. You guys will have the best time. You'll probably plow so many bitches over there. <laughs> Insane. But... Um, yeah, it is the biggest scam Huge going scam. in the history of the world. But you're right. There is a bit of these girls trashing these guys where you go, that's just like how the game that's is the, Yeah, that's the system. But like it, you literally just, you were under the impression that when you bought a ring that it holds its value. But it is also hilarious is, pitching them like female empowerment slogans to, to get them to come yeah, sell their $20,000 ring for, like, nine gr for 900 bucks. Let me guess, this company is not female owned. <laughs> so like a male owned company. Yeah, it's dudes. Yeah, it's dudes pitching female empowerment. I mean, it's clever. Look at you. Yeah. You're just, uh, you fucking, if you want to really smash the patriarchy, just put this ring on. I you. mean, that's like another thing too. It's like we used, like if you, if you buy a chick a used ring and she'd be like, what the fuck? 
Okay, yes. we can give you the patriarchy it's smashing a stone, discount. You go, it's a stone and a piece of metal. Let me ask you a question here. We, we have a discount, but I don't know if you apply. Do you hate the patriarchy? Because we have a hate the patriarchy <laughs> discount. You do? Oh, my oh. God. Well, then that's going to... Oh. You're going to get a real good deal here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 45 bucks. Jake, if you didn't hate the patriarchy, it'd be 35. So you're already fucking... There's nothing more thing that, or one of the most things that chicks are willfully ignorant about is jewelry, like value. Of like wedding rings. There's a lot of them up there, but bags. Yeah, yeah, but but bags actually kind of I think. I know. Do the, I, as I'm saying it, I disagree because yeah. I had an ex girlfriend that used to buy and sell them, and they actually do retain their value. Yeah, but not They're, all. They of them are an somewhere. asset. Like a six thousand dollar bag, kind of is an asset. Yeah, it's not worth two hundred dollars. Whereas like a diamonds sometimes have a thousand percent markup on them. Like legitimately, like it's just like it's a ten x <laughs> markup. So if you go need to sell it, you're like you're taking a huge haircut. Like just like you're yeah. walking out of there bald. Oh, bald, <laughs> bald though. You're really fucking the patriarchy because oh. you got a fucking crew cut now. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started, man. That, G.I. That's Jane. <laughs> that's how those oh, haircuts. Yeah. That's how that look started. A girl walked in with a wedding ring. She walked out with yeah. a fucking <laughs> nose ring in the middle of her nose and a buzz cut. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Robert De Niro, he basically... Um, his his ex assistant yeah. is trying to get a big payday. Speaking of taking down the patriarchy, he's she's trying he's trying to do a mean gate on Robert De Niro, and not, Robert De Niro's sort of not having it a little bit, right? Yeah, because the it's this ain't 2016 anymore. Guys are a little less living in fear. Well, he didn't do anything. he'd be doing right, but doesn't matter. He would be doing a struggle session apology, yeah. whereas right now he's just sort of brushing it off. And he went in the courtroom and he was like, "Yeah, she sucked." Like I don't know what to yeah. tell you, right? But his assistant testifies she was forcing to do demeaning tasks. Ask, like washing bed sheets and researching private schools for his child so she's kind of her thing is that like because she's a girl uh-huh. i had to wash the sheets and he was like well what do you want to do the guy task he's like hey move my desk around you sure. know and she's like no i want to i'm an assistant i want to like write read scripts and goes well we didn't have any scripts to read right now that's so. what she wants she wants to be like i'm robert de niro's assistant i'm going to be uh basically Booking making changes re- to his scripts and stuff or i don't know yeah doing all the fun shit right yeah i don't, I don't know testing I, out I, the pr- I, she wants to I, test out the private jets to make sure they're comfortable enough. yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> i was gonna say i'm like comfort for, check for on the, the private sh- for the sheets i'm like surely you can kind of Offload that job on someone else. No, washing the sheets. Is there going to be a laundry? Um, is there sort of like a laundry uh, mat in the PJ? Or yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I was like, you're the PJ. Huh. Like, yeah, I, I think her responsibility was getting the sheets, making sure that they were clean, and not so much doing it herself. Well, it's like what is she? She wants her thing. Is she wants to do the guy task. I guess like hey, I got this wheelbarrow of mulch I need in the back. It's not here, guy right? task or girl task. You're Robert De Niro's assistant. No, but you, I think you're, you're wrong. I think you're wrong about that. I think there's a little bit of like she. I think there's a little bit of like hey, oh, I'm trying to get my wife this present. To uh, you get some for me. I think you'd give that to a girl. Yeah. Whereas the guy, you might be like, hey, do you mind getting all these boxes out of here? Sure, sure. But I'm saying if you're his assistant, like if I had an assistant, I'd be like, hey, you don't have to do this yourself, but get these boxes out of here. Like, Someone figure get it. The boxes, yeah, the boxes need to get out of here. I'm not doing it. Well, I'm Robert is, De Niro. See, this is how the bureaucracy starts. Now she's hiring people to take, well, do if, her task. Well, if I'm asking her to and do your assistant sitting there kicked up in the PJ, and you go, "What's going on?" You go, oh, "Yeah, I got Guillermo doing it." Yeah, that's you go, fine. Well, I don't want Guillermo doing it. I hired you to do it. Well, but you don't well, hire, hire Guillermo. You don't hire her for labor. You hire her for just to offload your bullshit. So you're like, "Yeah, go on Jiffy or whatever, one of those websites or Craigslist." Well, as long as I'm not paying you more. Yeah, I mean, it's if fine. I'm getting the receipt for it. Sure. If I hire to do a job, and then I'm getting receipt for the person she paid to do the job yeah I'm like no, i hired you to go get the ring not to hire a personal shopper yeah i mean i guess it depends what what he hired her her uh, job description was i suppose well she uh, so you're interpreting more like that i'm sort of thinking she's in this specific one she's saying i'm, I'm saying yeah. i'm getting these tasks because i'm a girl oh. whereas like the fighting bears tasks that the guy assistants get would you like those tasks? She worked for the Goodfellas stars vanity company, Canal Productions, for 11 years. She then sued him for 12 mil. So she's not looking for a small How chunk of she change. How went for? Here. 11 years of this shit, she, she says. She was, that's she was abused. 1.1 1. 1 million. She was abused for 11 years straight. Oh, they picked the numbers out of a fucking hat, Crazy right? Crazy, though. Wow. What kind of assistance making that kind of money? Well, no, she wants 11. She wants 12 mil for the... For the 11 years. Yeah, but for the, the abuse. Dam- the abuse. She's saying she's damaged. All right. She can't even wake up. She's just every morning she's waking up to Bob. Oh. Like she's having nightmares about like, you call this a clean sheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I don't. I don't you bringing this to me, this clean sheet? I don't see anyone else around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any other sheets around. So these must be the, what you're telling me is a clean sheet. <laughs> 
Pesci. And other Joe Robert Pesci. De Niro lines. That was Joe Pesci. We did it. Oh, no, it's not. I think we did it. No, you no, look. You looking, talking to me, yeah, De Niro. Yeah, yeah. yeah we right. did our sketch about it. Remember? Yeah, it was about a year look ago. Like a but clown, that was special. Um, Bob called me to berate me about a scheduling thing. <laughs> a scheduling thing. It's like, what did? What was it? Me screwing up the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> I think the problem is once you're like around in that world and you go like even though you are the assistant and you, you start thinking you're important yeah you go well I'm Robert De Niro's assistant which is like I should be you know treated way better than an assistant and it is a weird thing you do I bet start- there are some assistants who have people below them like you're like I have an assistant the assistant has an assistant <sighs> I'm the assistant to the assistant of Robert De Niro that doesn't have a ring to it that's eh? fine though Let's, you're, you know, you'll take over the, that person's now the assistant. One day you will be the that assistant. That person is the assistant now. Because <laughs> the assistant fucking couldn't handle it. <laughs> it's in a Manhattan court. Do you know that De Niro lives in New York? Yeah. I knew that. Do you know how I know? No. Because I was looking at potentially a real estate agent, and Corinne told me that uh, Bobby De Niro's uh, uh, niece is a real estate agent. Oh, okay. And apparently that she—that's a big part of it—is De Niro's niece real estate. <laughs> oh, I just—I just. Well, I knew he lived here, but also <laughs> wise guys real estate. <laughs> wise guys in the states. <laughs> I was with Mark Anthony this weekend because they were him and Packer were in Edmonton. <laughs> they did him and Anthony and JJ. Mark Anthony and JJ did a, sh- a show called Buffet Buds, right? And Mark Anthony's like uh, super Italian. Yeah, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. And we we used to say that the production company was Wise Guys yeah, Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we used to say it was nine guidos coming around. Like oh, the only thing anyone's talking was the catering. Yeah, they're all covered in fucking <laughs> dust. From they the all have cameras, just cameras that fell off a truck, <laughs> and they're all in fucking. <laughs> Ooh. And JJ hey, said he told him. Pod. He goes, you know, Ryan Danny called you Wise Guys Entertainment. I go, and then he told me he said that. I go, what the? Are you fucking trying to put get me on a list there, pal? <laughs> I don't need Wise Guys Entertainment. <laughs> Wise Guys Entertainment definitely has old fashioned gear. They're yeah, recording uh, on a VHS, but yeah. they know a guy who can put it on. They can the digitize cr- it. Got the crank. <laughs> Cameras definitely fell out of a truck for Wise Guys Entertainment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was saying with the Robert De Niro thing, though, the, this guy who I follow on uh, Twitter who's like hangs out and doesn't hang out. He's like a court reporter. He's like an independent court reporter. And he was the guy who was covering the Sam Bankman Freed trial. And he goes to like the Brooklyn courthouse. And then, but there's multiple trials. So then he's like doing Sam Bankman Freed. And he goes, now I'm heading over to Robert. Robert De Niro and Robert De Niro was like at the same time. Interesting. Standing back and free in like the next like room over or whatever. Oh, so it's sort of like there's two fun parties and you're gonna you know I'm gonna bounce around. Yeah, he just goes and he just bounces around and he just covers them. And I would go to the De Niro trial. That'd be an interesting one. Yeah. Sam Bankman Free is probably a lot of inside baseball. But yeah, how do you get, I, I, is it hard to get in? I actually caught. Is that exclusive? Remember when you need to know a guy? No, remember when Coffeezilla was in town and then did he get in? Yeah, so I talked to him because I was like, I was. I was how like, do you get in? I go, how do you go in there? And he's he's basically like, there's an overflow room. He's like, you could show up. I think at like four in the morning or five. Like in the you morning. wait over like it's Taylor Swift, kind of like, and you, if you wait long enough, you can get in to watch. Like, but I think a lot of journalists probably do that. But you can get in at like five. But then if you show up at like nine, he's like, you can just go to. Um, there's like an overflow room for everybody who can't get into the main one, and you can watch. I think it's over like a closed caption TV or closed circuit TV or something. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, people just do that, like, just for... I think people do that for entertainment, and then this guy does it, like, he's... If I was old and retired, that's a fun thing to do for, like, a 70-year-old. You and the boys just go to the Bobby trial? Yeah, just go watch some or SBF or whatever, or, like, I mean, Puff Daddy. Ah, uh, you want to catch the SBF matinee? I mean, it's like some of the craziest trials in, in America happen at that courthouse. Because that's a, Epstein it's a fe- must have been well, a real... That's, people are probably camping out to get Well, that. it is, because that's a federal... In Brooklyn, that's where Shkreli's thing was, and, and Shkreli went, too, actually, but that's a federal courthouse, so... All the big things like probably El Chapo and all those Ooh, things. I don't want to go to El Chapo. I don't want to be seen there. Yeah, are happening at that courthouse. I don't want to. Yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah. too dangerous for me. Yeah, yeah. Start thinking that you're fucking, you know. Abo- above El Chapo? No, they start thinking that maybe you're in on it. Yeah. And then go, Who's this guy that keeps coming up here? What is he? What are you doing here, yeah, pal? And then you get the old Colombian necktie. I don't need a Colombian necktie <laughs> for going. <laughs> Poking around my business yeah, where it ain't my business. Yeah, 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 Whatever happens yeah. to El Chapo is none of my business. You know what yeah, I mean? The, That's uh, between him and the court system and Keith, God. Keith Raniere, he was at that one. What's his again? The Nexium guy. Ooh, they're all there. Like literally. Do you want to like, go the, to one? Yeah, I'll be down. There's, like the biggest trials in a, in a we can bring, maybe bring. Is De Niro done? Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, we'll go to Shkreli. We'll all go down. Let's go to the next good one. Yeah, that'd be a fun podcast to do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Can we bring our gear? Uh, no, I don't think you can even bring phones in. I don't think you can even bring phones in. <laughs> we often never bring our podcast and you're in the back of the courtroom. <laughs> okay, Bobby is making to the trial. <laughs> Bobby is showing up to the trial. <laughs> Who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> 
Bob called me to berate me about a scheduling thing. Um, he, she testified in court. He screamed at me and then he hung up and then he called me back. So <clears throat> I will I will say it's sort of the same thing as Jimmy Fallon, though. There is a bit of women are putting a stop to all bad bosses. Because yeah. the, when it was just guys in the workforce, you could get away with anything. Now that girls are infiltrated every single job, you got to... You can't do the same sort of shit that you can pull with a woman. No, no, definitely not. I mean, again, it's like, what are the, like, unless you had a very set job description and shows these are all the things I'm responsible for. And then, but again, like every job's like that where someone will be like, Hey, can you do this? This needs to be done. But I think the thing is you have to treat them like a girlfriend that's basically on the brink yeah. where it's like if she didn't do it, like if she's like she just got out of the insane asylum and she's a day away from going back and and she kind of, hey, I asked you to get groceries and I looked in the fridge and it's just uh, completely full with cement. You go, you did that? And she goes, yes. And then you have to go, okay, so... Mm. Definitely nothing wrong with that. Just in future, you have yeah. to try to be yeah, like you very, be very nice. Honestly, great try. You know, and people have done a worse job. So I'm not saying that it wasn't good. It's just we're preferring when I talk next. In the are you writing? You know, if you don't want to write it down, that's fine. In the future, when I do say groceries, I'm sort of thinking edible products. Yeah, I wonder if he had at some point made her some sort of promise for some sort of promotion like into the production company of like you know maybe we'll make you like like you know you do enough time as a uh, you work your way up from extra to kind lead. of or whatever you know seriously though but like but then you, the problem is you make that promise you go you know well, eventually like you'll you're not gonna be my assistant you gotta pay the piper it's like in uh what we do in the shadows where the guy's just like the assistant forever and he's getting really upset about it yeah you know and you're like she but, thinks but you promise like eventually but then if you don't and then they start getting really bitter and mad because they're like what so i'm just your fucking assistant forever yeah what do they want to do i think eventually people like that become you know managers or agents or something right like that's your yeah. like parlay into hollywood yeah exactly but it's not up to him to get but you that's when job. you're an assistant at like a yeah exactly that's not up to him but <clears> if you know him i'm sure that's how attorney pressed robinson on why she never filed a formal harassment complaint despite being the point person for these types of issues involving other employees of the customer and she said she didn't file the paperwork because she feared retaliation from de niro so that she's She's painting the picture that, you know, it's going to be raining lightning and De Niro's at your, at oh, your I mean, glass window. I mean, you hear retaliation from Robert De Niro. You're sleeping with the fishes. That's what you think. <laughs> Concrete shoes. And he sort of does think he's the guy in the movies. Oh, right? Remember sure. when he was complaining about Trump? Yeah, yeah. He's like, this fucking guy. Like, yeah, 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 He was doing the whole thing. Oh. This, this guy, he's so fucking orangey. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're getting it from him. You're getting... You're getting uh, Robert De Niro is one of the true. most guys that sort of he morphed into believing he's his character. Yeah, he's going to put your head in a fucking and it's even, vice. He thinks he's going to put your fucking head in a vice. And it's funnier because he's a drama guy. Like, a lot of these guys are drama guys, and they start playing yeah. mafia guys, and they start... Start believing it. Like, these guys should be prancing around. You know, if they, if they didn't get to that role as a mafia guy, they'd be prancing around uh, midtown, some midtown theater in yeah, tights, you true, know? True, true, yeah, yeah. And now he's walking around being like, if this fucking president yeah. wants to fucking the problem is too, get every, rid of immigrants, you got to fucking come through me first. Every Guido in New York, though, like every dude who's like actually probably in the mob, but they're like they just think he's like royalty, you know. So they of probably course. are all kissing his ass so hard that he's like, I am one of these. Oh, guys, that's true right? a little bit, right? It's like when the actual mobsters are like see him, they're probably like the, he's, breaking, he's one of us. He's breaking thing. bread with you know, yeah, the, you know. So the, 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 there's that element too. What's where, that family that has another TV show? They've got so many. The Gaudis, sort of God, they're produ promoting a new one on Netflix. I go, how many TV? How many movies and TV shows? This is well, like the, the Gaudis. That, that, that one was about, uh, I think. John Gotti like them catching him. The well, yeah, that, that one face. hasn't been done yet. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's been done. They've made seventy five movies about John Gotti at this point. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I just watched. I don't even know how you have the guts to walk in and try to like pitch that. And you go a movie about Gotti, and you go, we've made seventy of them. I can't even remember what I just watched, but it was way too fucking long. I'll tell you what I Everything watched. Way too long. World War Two movie. Oh uh, yeah, it's a mini series, and people said they didn't like it, but I actually thought it was pretty good. What was it? Something about the darkness. The darkness we do not see. The light we don't see. Oh, I don't know. And uh, the only problem with it, so it's a, the, the new thing on Netflix, four episodes, which is the perfect amount for a mini series. Yeah. And uh, it's about. I watched the Jewel documentary. Way too long. It should have been an about hour. jeweling. Yeah, about the company that started Jewel, and it's four episodes. It's pretty interesting, but it's just too long. How bad does it say jeweling is? Um, how bad does it say? Well, they so got completely well, out the, of that game. Well, the thing is, is the crazy part is, is that it was an American company. 
uh, plume, which is like if anybody, I had the original packs actually, which was like for weed, and then they were trying to figure out this thing, and they and then they invented Juul, and some people were getting sick from it, and they're getting like the popcorn lung, if we remember, like yeah. we all that stuff. But you're like exploding. So then they go, okay, uh, we're not going to allow an American company like Scott Gottlieb at the FDA, who people know and like f- on the board of yeah. Pfizer now all that shit. They're like, yeah, we're not allowing this, and then now it's just like some Chinese company, fucking Elf Bar, just came in and now doing it like, worse, doing it worse. It's like the same thing. It's just like now it's a Chinese company instead. You're like. How how is that better? Well, it's the same thing. They just got rid of smoking in London, and it was like, all you're doing is making it cooler. Yeah. For starters. Well, they're only banned so you're probably... Yeah, but this, you think those kids aren't getting smokes if they want smokes? Yeah. yeah you're yeah. doing one of two things. You're making them jewelers. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're really doing. That's what you're really doing. And you can still get jewels, Well, I remember right? they banned, the, they banned uh, jewels here yeah. for a while, and you just have to go to like... Any convenience store and be like jewels, and the guy would have all yeah, they yeah. all had their fucking and then, rack they did of them ban underneath. The, yeah, and they did ban the flavors. I guess that's one of the main ones, but still, it's just stupid because there's all these companies that do the exact same thing, and they're like not American companies. So you're like, what did this even accomplish? Okay. Well, the only problem with this movie, and this I guess then is the movie segment, but yeah. uh, is that they're it's always weird when they do this, but it's French people, right? Yeah. So it's French people in World War Two. Uh-huh. However. They all speak in English accents, and they don't even have a French accent, right? Mm, so they did, British. If you're gonna make people French, like British English, like English, uh, like, no, they speak English like American English. Oh, okay. So it's just kind of weird because they are like, and I just want to say, "Vive la France." Yeah, right, and you're right, like, right. they didn't. And French people are so fucking. They're fairies normally, right? They're a little mm. light in the loafers. These French people, right? <laughs> yeah. So they, they didn't really make these Frenchmen uh, um, gay enough, in my opinion. Yeah. So I kept forgetting, I, like, to be honest, I kept just forgetting it was France. Yeah, that is kind of the <laughs> ultimate. Cause like, I th- eventually, then they'd say some French bullshit, and I'd be like, oh, right, it's right, France. Right. They, well, that's the problem, because they've tried every possible permutation of how do you do how do you do that? how do you do a foreign thing this is probably the english be- the best one British. is you make them english but you give them the accent right so make them speak even though it doesn't make sense because they're speaking english as a second language accent right. but i think that would still make more sense to me if they were like right. and that is uh, how are you doing like yeah, yeah. i think that would make more sense than just French making Canadian. them american because you just completely and it's also world war ii thing so you just kept i just kept thinking it was a different country right yeah i know that is a weird one because you know but then if you go okay well then they'll speak French and you'll get fucking voiceover. And the main girl in it's not white either, right? So it's like, the main girl in it's not white. So she's like, I don't know what she is, but I'm not saying there's only white people in French, France, but there's probably way more only white people in France. Yeah. Now I guess it's not 90, now. Now it's 90% Muslim. <laughs> Every day it's a new Muslim protest in France. But my point is, if you have a girl that's not white, she's speaking in a not French accent, and you're kind of like, she doesn't look, it's just hard to keep. It's, yeah, you got to really like stay mentally in the. Yeah. Yeah. I that being I said, I still probably think it was good. Yeah. But yeah, again, it's like, okay, well, they could have an accent or they could have uh, subtitles or they could have overdub. I've seen some decent overdubs, but even still. I prefer this, though, over the dub. In my mind, I think I like the overdub, but in in practice, I don't actually like it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So so, uh, whatever. That's a small criticism. What are they going to do? I guess the option is not make the story. But Robinson admitted on the stand that she held on to her computer equipment, gift cards, petty cash and other properties belong to the canal productions for De Niro about a year she returned the goods to the company filed a loss after the file the uh, company filed a lawsuit against her she testified but this was funny to me because so she stole a bunch of stuff <laughs> well also referring to stealing money as petty cash yeah you go, that's like, cash <laughs> Exactly. Obviously, on a film set, they call like the cash that's used for purchases petty cash. But you're like, <laughs> and I obviously held on to some of the goods, like you know, staplers, like you know, ten thousand G's of petty cash. Yeah, it's you like know, you stole a bunch Mac- of money. Brand new MacBook Pros, you know, just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Office like, supplies. So, but some of it, she's like, she hold on to like her MacBook that yeah, they yeah, gave yeah. her. But petty, petty cash and gift cards, like you just steal, you just straight up stole money. Correct. And then they, but this is after she filed her lawsuit, and she was like, well, you stole a bunch of money from us and she's like well i had to steal the money because i was abused <laughs> is this trial ongoing or is it done i don't Do know. know that's a good question yeah i, th- I don't think it's it was, done, i think so. it was ongoing when i when i in this when at the I time th- of writing this article i think it is ongoing as well after robinson left the witness stand dr robert goldstein a psychiatrist testified as an expert that she suffered from insomnia ibs and gerd generalized anxiety disorder uh, because of uh, <laughs> how is that possible that you GERD's like um, you talking to me? Well, GERD's like um like uh, IBS. Yeah, you, you can't. 
Well, I don't know. I'd have to have it's like heartburn. It's like heart, Gerd's like heartburn. IBS is like shitting yourself. So from just, the, from being yelled at from De Niro. Because Bobby De Niro made such an unsafe work environment that you're just your body's just evacuating itself in every direction. <laughs> She was discriminated against and uh, retaliated against after she quit. So I don't know. It doesn't really say a lot of what he. It's all her saying he did stuff. I can't really get a real yeah. wind. I don't be- think it's completely out of the question that Robert De Niro says you want to fucking sue me. Yeah, there's gonna be repercussions. I mean, you'll never work in this industry ever again. So yeah, right? I, don't, I mean, I, I mean, she won't. This is regardless of how this goes. You're like, who the fuck would hire her at this point? I know. That's. I mean, I guess maybe she's. She goes. Yeah, I'm done in this industry probably. So. So we're okay. So be- I'm just gonna do a quick two things here. So there's these two uh, girls on the internet doing all the rules for guys, right? And this girl goes, "I won't sleep with a man until he spends two thousand dollars on me." Here's why. She was going on a list. I'm a of- professional high out high escort, high class escort. <laughs> And I charge two thousand dollars. <laughs> exactly right. So this I this is retarded. Yeah. Where she goes, uh, it's like obviously it always boils down to how hot are you? Sure. He's like, did you see that girl that's like five hundred pounds on the internet? Yeah. And the she was just like, insults or yeah, yeah, yeah. queen. <laughs> Actually, that, that was funny. That's leaning into it when you're that big and you're just like these fucking incels got Cheeto dust and she's five hundred <laughs> pounds. Hilarious. Yeah. But she goes. um, uh, do you ever see the photos of Gorlock the Destroyer as a dude? Yeah. The high school photo, Raymundo? the yearbook, yeah, the yearbook photo, yeah, yeah. The, the Destroyer. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Gorlock the Destroyer. I love that. Is I love that that's, one that's kind of cool too. I like that. That's the nickname. Is Gorlock. Gorlock stuck. Yeah, yeah, Gorlock stuck. But if you actually see Gorlock pops up every now and then, yeah. and Gorlock's like in on the joke a little. Yeah, bit. for sure. Like Gorlock's pretty chill with people kind of trashing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, him. That one's a tough one. <laughs> no it ain't <laughs> what do you see it just as a piece of meat to you let's say they um, mentioned that a friend of hers has now made a point of not sleeping with a guy until she spends two thousand dollars the first reason the new rule is if a guy is not willing to spend two thousand out of pocket expense then there's a fair chance the guy is properly invested on you so there's some girls that have things and this is how you retaliate against this you go well listen i've actually itemized the things that are in kind expenses that tally up to two thousand me getting here on time my time is actually valued at a thousand dollars an hour so i've actually itemized that on this list so i'm actually at three thousand right now so you should already been boning me i mean i literally just you buy a watch you go yeah this watch is ten grand i bought this for this thing so i bought this watch for this so i'm itemizing that at ten grand Uh, so order anything you want off, off the value menu. And what will my two G's be unlocking? <laughs> now that yeah. the two G's have been unlocked? Yeah. So this is just bullshit that girls say. That's crazy Marvel, though, because right? you're like two grand, you're like, even like a nice date in New York City, what, 300, two, 300 bucks? It's like pretty pretty nice, at a pretty nice place, drinking and all that. So you're like, we've got to go on seven of these before you're going to have sex? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Like uh, like seven $300 dates before no, you're going to have sex? She's saying bring her to just, you know, she won't ideally drop it in the first two. But that's like even, a, I don't know. Well, I, I just I, bought uh, you front row tickets to the next. Yeah, like, you I know? Guess, yeah. But then can this just, other girl. I mean, at one point, you're going to be like a chick like this. You'll be like, can I just give you like 1200 bucks i'm gonna spend 800 tonight I'll just, I'll just give you 1200 1200 in cash and then you. we'll bang and then you go she's like oh yeah that's fine you go okay you're a prostitute yeah you're a 100 <laughs> i mean of course you're a prostitute yeah, right? yeah but you're like literally it's like you idiot it's idiot. like all girls i'll just leave it on the 1200 on the nightstand every girl has some element of like i don't want a guy to be cheap before i've been yeah obviously. and you're looking for a different thing it's like but you don't make yourself a technical prostitute mm-hmm. by definition yeah it's like this is what I need, and if you're going to get the girlfriend experience, you're going to do this and this. And it's yeah, like, did you just say girlfriend experience? She goes, you know, like just I don't. Like, I'm actually wasn't looking for the girlfriend experience. Just like, how much for the one before just that? Say that. <laughs> people just say that. Yeah, what's one under that? What's one under the girlfriend? <laughs> what's the four? T- what, what's the hanging out five times experience <laughs> look like? It's also two thousand. Hanging out five friends, not meeting any friends experience. Yep. Right. What's the not telling my wife experience? <laughs> Yeah, that's 4000 <laughs> I use this hack to shame cheap men who want to split the bill, and guys say it's manipulated, so she's getting trouble, and I actually agree with her. She goes, when a man wants to go 50-50, do this, began uh, the co-worker and aspiring singer from Los Angeles. Yep. Yuck. In a... Ch- uh, trending TikTok She goes Advising single ladies The best practice Is to get them to pay She goes Oh my god I'm so embarrassed for you Said the millennial Feening shock As she just uh, Been asked to Dutch treat In the clip And she goes 
Oh, wait, you just wanted to be friends? She asked condescendingly. I'm so confused the entire time I thought this was a date. I'm so sorry. Here's my card. I actually like it. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only that, but even if that works, hopefully no guy's stupid enough to let that work because what do you there's mean? no coming back from it. Even if you're the guy who goes, oh, oh, what? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll pay for this. This is a date. You're not coming back from that. Right. Yeah, yeah. So but she like, already doesn't want it. She's already guess, saying, yeah. She goes, that this was cheapskate's enough. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, so now I'm paying. She goes, that that is a good move yeah, yeah. for girls. Yeah. That's a good girl move. Yeah. Because that's what girl moves should be. Uh, a little more nuanced. Yeah. They shouldn't be. They, sh they shouldn't should be, be like. Yeah. Con they shouldn't be um, like in uh, confrontational. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. That's like, a smart the most move a chick should girl. do on a first date is just be like, pretend she goes should be and you go no 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 like that's that's all that should happen uh -huh. like she goes you want to and you go no 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 of course not yeah like, like that kind of thing i would and respect that move if a girl goes yeah oh i'm sorry i, I didn't realize is this so this isn't a date yeah oh yeah. just you wanted to be friends mm -hmm. that's a good move yeah and maybe the guy could come back from it but probably not nah. Because if you pay, you're just like, what a bitch. You never, no. Asking to go split seas is fucking yeah, tough. No, you can't do that. <laughs> guys, it's just, I know it's not fair or whatever, but it's just. No, if you don't want to pay as a guy, you need to just not bring your, you need to forget your wallet and act like I would never normally do this, but I've <laughs> lost my wallet somewhere. And then you act like you're so, no, this is what you do. You forgot your wallet, but you lost your wallet somewhere. You go, fuck. Oh my God. I guess I left it my uh, wallet in the Uber and I or something to hold like that. The rest that. of the night's trying to track it down. <laughs> no, no, no. Then you go. You know what? Honestly, it's not even that big a deal to me. I think I had a three or four hundo in there, but whatever. I'll just let it go. No, I'm spending time with you. I'll let the I'll let the money go. I can always buy a new wallet. I'll just get the cards tomorrow. Like, listen, I don't want to create stress in our environment. I'll get obviously get you back at some point for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you, then you're gone like the flash. Tinder swindler. Well, she goes. <laughs> well, she goes to you. She goes. She goes, oh, you didn't want to be friends? You go, no. What are you kidding me? I was saying, no, did you think I asked to go splitsies on this? Yeah. I was saying, <laughs> do you want to go splitsies on, like, sometimes I wear the condom, sometimes you wear a, uh, a female condom. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, I yeah. meant you want to go splitsies on dessert, like, have half of the dessert each. <laughs> That's what you say. You go, I want, no, I, you idiot. I was no, saying, no. Or, or you I was say, saying, let's get a Sunday. What about this? Because she says, oh, I didn't know you wanted to be friends. You go, no, I don't want to be friends. I just want to smash you and just move on with my life. You think that'll work? But you're not going to because you no, already obviously. tried to go splits. Yeah, but this, that's. I'm saying, can you do the splits tonight after I pay for this meal <laughs> okay. in its entirety? Yeah. <laughs> or you go, or if you're the today. guy, you go, that was a test <laughs> and you I passed it. Garçon. <laughs> I was actually testing you. <laughs> yeah. To make I was actually testing you. <laughs> and you passed, milady. I've already paid for the meal. Did you? <laughs> no, but I basically in my mind already did. Yes, I, I decided I would. Only if you passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got this clown thing. But we're going to go... Okay, follow us. Come over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash theboyscast. And if some of you aren't feeling that, we have theboyscast .com ca, and that's our, our fourth wall, too. Yep. Watch the episodes there and yes. buy merch. Ah. Fourthwall.com slash theboyscast. Cool and remember, not Friday, Saturday next week is when the Boys Cast will be coming out. Yep. Same time, same channel. Possibly same time. There is a slight chance it'll be a little later, depending on how things shake down. But probably just at like just what, 12 live your lives, two. guys. Thank oh, people know. start yelling at you, and I don't. Well, like, we're telling them now. I don't like to be tardy with things. Yeah. Okay. I may we make a verbal commitment that we're going to do an episode. We want people to know you're getting it. It's just it's going to be a little light. And there's another one on the patreoncom slash cast right now with lots of fucking good shit. You already know Real what it is. Good. That good. Good. Support us. Peace. Later.